You are watching Lester Till I Die TV. Lester Till I Die. Hello, good evening, good day, good morning, good afternoon, good night, goodbye. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, ready to go? Ready for another ringing through the mangle? Uh, which basically, it, that is what following Lester is. Um, welcome along. We've got the team news to come up uh, in a second. Um, but how are you? Welcome to the channel. This is LTID TV from Leicester Till I Die. Thank you for joining us, whether that's either whether you're watching uh, or via uh, YouTube uh, or listening via YouTube. Please do get your comments in the um, in, in the chat and join in. Uh, keep everything respectable, as we always say. And remember, uh, it is a spoiler. No, sorry, it is a watch along, so no spoilers. Because what's going to happen? Me or one of my mods will kick you out. Uh, if they kick you out, it'll be for 24 hours. If I have to kick you out, that's it. It's it's forever and ever. Amen. Um, unless you send me 20 quid in a brown paper envelope or via bank transfer. That can be arranged. Um, Alan from Turf Moor. Hello, Alan. How are you? Uh, I hate me a wall. Alan, look, hey, don't we all? Don't we all? Um, you know, I think you can say uh, there's there's a few things that unites football. Um, one of those is the hatred of Millwall. Um, it's looking a bit difficult for you guys, isn't it? In the top flight, I'd love to see you up there because if have the banter, because obviously I lived there for 20 odd years, so uh, but mm, but then again, it's looking tight for us, so we might be playing you in this division next season. Who knows? I'm talking to mods, Nate is in. Hello, Nate, how are you? Um, Spencer, good evening to you as well. Yep, we're coming up to team news. Um, I'm going to discuss that uh, that very, very gentleman, in fact. Um, and talking about gentlemen, uh, he likes to make an entrance. I'm not sure if he's there or not because I can't see whether his camera's on. He's in the green room, so we'll bring him in in a second. Um, but uh, yep, it's a night, it is Millwall. A lot can be decided tonight, a lot can be decided. Um, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be? Um, I don't know, that's my bum, by the way. Uh, but anyway, this is the lineup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in along the bottom as well. Um, and there we go. So, yep, as Spencer said, Eunice is in. Um, I love Eunice, I want Eunice to do well. I really, really do. Surprised because, um, Enzo said going to make a lot of changes. He's only made two. And one of those we were probably expecting. Uh, I expected, if I'm honest with you, uh, Chowdhury in, simply because Enzo had said he's going to make a lot of changes. Uh, that hasn't happened. Um, Andreas, he is in from Cyprus. Hello, how are you doing? We're going to do score predictions later, so don't worry. Uh, I'm just waiting for, for, for Brad to go on camera, then we'll bring him in. Um, Millwall are unchanged tonight, uh, despite losing to Huddersfield at the weekend. They haven't made uh, any changes. Uh, but if I can get my mouse to work, which it is now going to do, um, and my screen's gone off. Oh, very good on that, that one there. Um, so it's Hermanson in goal, of course, it is. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, Ricardo. 
Faz, Vestergaard and Doyle is back. Um, and then we've got Indeedy, Winks, Dewsbury Hall across the middle. And when we've got... Um, sorry, Indeedy, Winks and Dewsbury Hall across the middle. Yeah, Unit. I can't multitask. I can't multitask. And then we've got Eunice and uh, Mavadidi either side of Vardy. Right, it looks like he is here. Uh, he likes to make an entrance. He's a bit of a prima donna, let's be honest with you. But he is the man with the leastest. <laughs> it's Brad, and I shall bring him in, and I shall make him the same size as me. There you go. Brad, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Well, let's hope it stays a good evening anyway. Uh... Well, let's do I have my clapper out. Well, I wouldn't call her that, but... Um... <laughs> call the worst, believe you me. Well, that's very <laughs> Same true. word, but beginning with an S usually. <laughs> oh, well, well, I digress. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I've just seen your message and who's surprised, let's be honest. Oh, yeah, but I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, um, I don't bother what, what he does anymore. Um, I was expecting more changes after what Enzo said. I was, and I had to do a double take on the team just to make sure there was actually any changes. I'd see some people when he announced it say, oh, watch, there be no changes at 6.45. And 6.45 came along, and I was like, <coughs> oh. And then my brain went, it's the same team. And then my brain went, no, no, Vardy started. Okay, that's the difference. And then it took me a while to realise that that um, my, my new favourite, uh, Fatou, was on the bench and dropped for, for Eunice. So... I was expecting more changes. I have to say, I'm kind of glad there's not, though. Because it's kind of like... Yeah, you're doing, I, 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 when you take a chance, though, Chris, and make too many changes, it always seems to backfire mm -hmm. on, on you, doesn't it? So yes. maybe, maybe the idea is if we can get ourselves into a position of power where we're, 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 we're kind of cruising with 20 minutes to go, we can take some legs legs off and keep them fresh for Friday. Absolute mm. farce that we're playing on a Tuesday and a Friday, but you know, there I was we go. Gonna, I, was gonna, I was gonna mention that, you know. Uh well, yeah, but I think Eunice has deserved it. Uh, he had a very good impact off the bench. He got the assist for the winning goal, crucially, uh against Birmingham on a Saturday. Telling Leeds fans that sent us. Us top of the table. Not you, that sent us back top of the table. So again, look. I I wasn't going to mention Leeds fans, but seeing oh, as you did, seeing as you did, I love the fact that I've done nothing but take the piss out of them in my posts, in videos I've made, and they don't get it. They think we're being cocky. They don't realise that all we're doing is taking the piss out of them that they appeared. And less, I know it was two weeks, but it was only one game by goal difference that they were top. Um, and then they were ran back under the stones, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And and to those people that are going on other fandoms and whatever and going, listen to these cocky pair eh, and clipping it. A, you're very good at editing if you're just clipping it out to show that. B, you don't know the full extent of our channel to know that this has been onward banter between decent-ish Leeds fans that we have in the chat on occasion that come in now at the regular end of the season and, and, and a dig at the arseholes that came in, giving it all the big I am about being top of the league and, and, and then suddenly find themselves, like you said, less than a game later, hmm. you know, being being back where they are. So, yeah, it's, look, if people want to take it out of context, mate, all it's going to do is bring people to this channel. So more for it, I say. Why not? Yeah. To be honest with you, it, 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 if, they, if they've got such a sad life that they, they have to watch uh, Leicester channels instead of Leeds, then, you know, that says more about us than Leeds. But anyway, there we go. Um, yeah, so, uh, and on, I mean, Eunice, I, I, what I thought when I first saw Eunice was in there, um, he reminds me of, a lot about of Damari Gray. And when I say that, bear with me when I say that because oh, I'm going to have to bear with you because I'm about to about to explode with anger that you're comparing someone with a footballing brain with one that's brainless. But okay, no, 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 no. Uh, let, let me uh, no, no, no. Let me explain. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember Damari Gray? Um, uh, yes. He was potentially a talented footballer. Yeah, and he used to sit on the bench and get bored. And if we brought him on. He used to suddenly play very, very well. And he'd had a bit of injection into the team and a bit of pace and was quite direct at times. 
And then you think, oh, okay, you know, and then you call and you'd call for him to start the next game. He would start the next game, and it was fucking shit. And that is my worry with Eunice, and that's why I'm comparing him because you seem to when we seem to bring him on as a sub, he does very, very well. But when we take him, you know, when we put him on from the start, he doesn't always have the greatest of games. No, but in terms of... Am I allowed of... to say that? I, I, are you, have you I, I, that? I understand your comparison. You're wrong, because at Gun isn't a whiny little B-I-T-C-H. No, 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 no. I was no, just no, 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 the situation. No, 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 no. I'm doing a whole comparison for you now, Chris. The, 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 the can of worms has been opened, so all, all firing back. Because I can say this about Gray, because I worked for the football club for over five years. And I worked at both the training ground and I worked uh, down at the King Power. And where our office was in situated was uh, a little alleyway in between the um, the players' lounge, where they would go and get gathered at about 11 o'clock on a match day. And they'd mm. have to go past our our office to, to go onto the pitch side, to go through to the tunnel to do all their things they were doing before kickoff and whatnot. And Damari Gray was the biggest, whiniest little mayor I've ever met in my life. Oh, I think we deserve... I used to talk, talk to Ratwell a lot, which explains why they both personally did the same personality as a fucking eel, right? Because they always used to moan that they weren't getting the breaks in the team and what more do they have to do coming off the bench? And I did feel like sometimes turn around to them and said, maybe fucking score in 90 minutes when you get given a full game um, mm. because he couldn't do it. Eunice, I kind of get where you're coming from with Eunice. For me, though, Eunice, this is his first time since he was signed. Because when we when we loaned him in, Chris, when we brought him in on, on, on the loan deal, he was supposed to be a right winger. We had Mavadidi permanently signed. I don't know if we'd got Fatawu before or after Eunice had arrived. Either way, they were supposed to kind of maybe rotate a lot more than they had this season. Due to injuries and to suspensions and, and, and build up of fixtures, Atkins probably been the better player for, for Enzo for his adaptability because he's been able to put him in the middle, kind of like what he's done with Dennis Pratt and have him fill them roles when necessary. You know, when when a Winks has been suspended or um or indeed he had that long term injury and we needed someone to kind of fill that role for a bit. He kind of put that role in there. With three or four other players, you know, Chowdhury, Pratt, who I just mentioned, was in that role. So this is his first time we're seeing him on the right, probably since the start of the season when he probably played a few games out there before Fatawu, rightly, I have to admit, has, has made it his own and nailed it down. So it'd be interesting to see. I, there is always a cliché role for an impact sub, and he might be that sort of player. But I'd like to see him really tear Millwall to shreds tonight get a couple of assists, play really well on the right-hand side and maybe reignite that rivalry for a starting place on the wings because, the, you know, it's, that's what he wants to do. That's his ideal spot, isn't it, to play? It is. Well, we'll, we'll see at the end of this game, won't we? Because this will be his chance now. Although I've got to say at the end of the... I mean, he, he, he did a superb or Brighton-esque cross into the box uh, for Mavadidi to score. So credit where credit's due, he did make a difference. Um, and I noticed when he went at the end of the game that um, Enzo was giving him a lot of time, was 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 shoulder, you know, hand, arm around the shoulder, talking with him, smiling with him. So who knows? We know we've got until the end of the season. Will we buy him? I think there's a lot of things going on at the club that will uh, decide which players are yeah. staying, which are I, going. I, and I think, I think, if there was no, I think. I think if there was no question of our finances next season, it, if this was to not go away, because you've got to remember, this is a different financial period next season will be. It'll be a different financial three bracket for Leicester to have de dealt yeah. with. So assuming promotion means that our in transfer embargo comes off, I'm, I'm assuming we'll be in a new bracket of three seasons. So I would... I don't know about anybody else, but I would I would maybe go to if you wanted. To, we'll probably do a show at this end of the season, so I won't go into anyone else with an gun. I would take him. I mm. would take him because he's he's showing Chris he's versatile in positions. So we've got depth for a winger if something was happened to Fatawu, 
whose deal you'd imagine has to get sanctioned because it was agreed upon before any yeah. charge or so it wouldn't matter. But I'd like that depth in that position to be kind of sorted with him being in the side. And of course he can play in that midfield. We've seen that. So I would actually be inclined to sign him. In fact, I would after Fatawa, I would make him my next permanent sign into the club, if I'm being honest. We'll, we'll, we'll see, obviously, what happens with that at the end of the season. I was looking, as I said, at this team, expected more changes. Um, didn't have time to predict my own team, but if I had predicted, I would have probably had Chowdhury in there, purely because Enzo was saying changes. No disrespect to him. I'm glad Ricardo's playing. And do you think, therefore, with that, this team and... Let's face it, Eunice isn't a bad you know, alternative to Fatou, who is he? Um, and, and Vardy, Daka, we, we, we could have put our money, couldn't we, on, on that happening. Uh, mm. Do you think um, that Enzo is looking at this game as being more important than the Plymouth one? Because, I mean, looking at where they are in the table, um, Plymouth are 19th on 44, Millwall are in 20th on 44, um, there's only sort of seven goal goal difference in Plymouth's favour. So, well, does he see this? Um, are we away to Plymouth, by the way? I think we'll. Yes, yes, we are. Yes. We'll be away. But it's two. Plymouth. It's two away games. So, I can't see that he would be looking at Millwall and thinking, you know, uh, it's easier. Or is it just a case of that's the next game with the one with you know with Millwall is the next game. Millwall is the one we're going for. Yeah, I think that's more the case. If you've ever, if you've ever listened to Enzo in a press conference, whether it be the pre-match one or the post-match or, or just any interview he ever gets grabbed for by Radio Leicester or, or, or whoever, if he's ever asked that question, he always says we're focused on the game now. It's Millwall. Millwall's the focus. I don't think there's a, a less important one. I don't think he's the sort of manager that goes, go big for this one make more changes for that one because they should be easy to beat. There's no such thing in this division. We've seen it throughout this season from start pretty much all the way through to the finish, Chris. Even teams that you consider maybe are in that category as games get less and less, that they've got nothing to play for. We felt the full force of that against Bristol City. You know, not, not mm. really anything to play for. Bristol went and turned us over, beat us 1-0. So I don't think there's ever a case of Enzo's ever sat there and made the players even, and that would be the worst thing you could do as a manager, is have the players thinking, this is the big game, we'll stroll, we'll stroll on Friday night against Plymouth. I think it's a case of, I have to go strong. Um, we're not in a position where I can take too many risks with the 11, i.e. maybe starting a Chowdhury, chucking on a Braybrook or someone like that who, was on, who else is on the bench and whatnot. Can't do anything like that. But I've got to allow myself fresh players because we will be having Wednesday off, training Thursday, training Friday, travelling Friday night probably, and and, and then playing. Uh, so sorry, tra well yeah, that's it, isn't it? It'd be Wednesday, Thursday, travelling Thursday night, play training maybe at Plymouth's place on the Friday morning, yeah. and then yeah. and then playing. So yeah. he's got to his best to put out the strongest side as well as rest key players. I think yeah. if you was to say put a pound on one change that's going to be made for Friday by starting Vardy, I think it's going to be Dakar that will be back in the starting lineup for Plymouth. I think, yeah, I think that, that's that, that's obvious. I think Vardy. Um, last question, then we'll just take a little bit of a break. I think Vardy is the one uh, that's going to in, well, handle Millwall better. He'll love any banter he gets off the Millwall fans, and he'll just give it them back. Yeah, I mean, you think if the if the if the fans of opposition supporters uh, that have ever been to a game when Jamie Vardy's either been playing or on the bench, um, kind of had a meeting, they 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 probably figure out to not wind Jamie Vardy up because all that seems to happen. Oh is... yeah, no, 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 I I know what I'm saying, but sorry to rush you. I just want to get through everything, but yeah, yeah no worries. He will handle the situation better. Yeah, than possibly Dakar. Oh, yeah, of course he will. Yes, he will. He'll under the occasion more. And it's a hostile place to go. It's a, You know, we haven't got yeah. Ben Chilwell, so hopefully uh, Doyle won't shit himself taking the throw-in against Millwall. <laughs> no. I am actually glad that, that Doyle's in over JJ. And I know I like JJ, but I actually am glad for Doyle in over JJ because he's more defensive-minded. Do Doyle had a good game against Norwich, wasn't it? Uh, no, not Norwich. Game um, before yes, he was Norwich, wasn't it? The, no. Yes, he played well yeah. against Norwich. Norwich was the game before Birmingham. Yeah. In the, but, yes. yeah. 
Yeah. And then and he, he got taken off tactically for, for Birmingham. Uh, we're going to be back and we'll be having a look at some of the history between the teams uh, straight after this. The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die, independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network. And we've got 45 of you in. Please do click that like button. It really does help the channel. It gets us, uh, well, it helps with the algorithms, as they say. And at my age, any help you can get with your algorithms is most welcome. Gets us seen on platforms that we would not normally be seen. And then hopefully people will see us and subscribe to us. And if you can subscribe, if you're new, A, you've got to subscribe to get in the chat. But please do uh, consider subscribing because that helps the channel as well. In fact, just do this. Now then, Brad, now then, look at that. Back on top again. Um, we are away at Millwall. Uh, Leeds are at home to Sunderland tonight. Um, uh, tomorrow night, Ipswich are at home to Watford. A bit of a role reversal from Saturday when we were the only home team. Um, uh, Leeds, I mean, Leeds haven't lost at home all season. And they've only lost one this year. Maybe, hopefully, they are just hitting a little bit of a bad uh, streak. Things tend to come in three, Chris. So, you know, all I'm saying is Leeds lose this 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 calendar year. Mm. Leeds drop to third. Leeds lose the first home game of the season. It's, it's yeah. possible. It yeah. is all possible. And it's not easy. And the thing is, Chris... You know, we say it's really funny how football psychology can work. At, at um, Mainly at this point of the season, it really works. Their game kicks off at 8 o'clock. Now, could you imagine the frustration that, that, that their fans would hear if they're checking the phones, listening to the radios or, or, or getting carrier pigeons to tell them or whatever. Leicester win their game tonight, 15 minutes to go at, at, at Allen Road and it's still nil-nil or, or, or whatever between Leeds and Sunderland, that'll really get the crowd going and, you know, it could be interesting. And and now Leicester are in that position of power, Chris, you know, still with that game in hand but being top. All we've got to do is do our job tonight and then the pressure is on Leeds and Ipswich. I, I'd, I'd actually, now, now we're in the position when Chris, I'd rather play our game, do our job and put the keep the pressure on them. We, that's going to be a long 15 minutes at the end because Leeds have scored a lot of uh, last minute goals and you know you, you could you could bet with 15 minutes to go there might be one nil down and they come back and get a draw it, it's going to be uh, that that game uh, where we may, we may just do that last 15 minutes when we should be doing the uh, post match maybe having that game on we will see we will see how it goes. But then again, we might have 15 minutes uh, stoppage time on as well so who knows. But I mean look Sunderland are the 13th with 52. They're neither down or, or, or battling for, for playoffs. They're not going to get drawn. I mean, all right, they're 10 points off the drop, but they're not going to get pulled into that drop zone, uh, I don't think, from where they are. Um, I think it was in, in the Mercury that um, they were saying that, you know, we, we've possibly got the hardest game, which we have. And Sunderland have got the easiest game because Sunderland have got nothing to play for. But Sunderland are going to be no mugs. Um, they're just going to want to win the game as much as anybody. But where they are, there's no pressure on them, really, is there? No, and it's funny what having no pressure can do to a side. I mean, you look at Sheffield United in the Premier League. Uh, OK, they went to go and see Dr Chelsea, but for a side who's all but mathematically down, you can imagine their managers try to take the pressure off them and say, look, it is what it is. Let's just try and go out, swing in if we can go out at all, swing in. And, and, and they've got to draw, you know, they've got to draw against Chelsea. So when you've got nothing to play for, Chris, the, the shackles are off. All you're trying to do, as a manager, you want to have a good end to the season. You know, you want to get a good win percentage out of them last seven or eight games because A, it helps secure your job um, and B, you know, you get trusted by the players that, that, that you can manage them well. 
And if you want to look at it from maybe a selfish point of view from the players, it, they play with you know, no freedom. They get a chance to really showcase themselves, to put themselves on a transfer market for may, maybe moving to a, a, a Premier mm. League club or abroad even, if they wanted to go abroad and whatever. So th th these sides are probably more dangerous to play than a side that's got something to fight for. You look at the mm. Ipswich-Southampton game, that was nervy and end-to-end, -end, and it was actually a seven-goal thriller, wasn't it, in the end? I think it was 4-3 Ipswich. Um, and that game was up the tempo. But they got the job done because Southampton couldn't hold the nerve, whereas Ipswich on Wednesday go to Watford, another team you could say, like, Leeds have nothing to play for, and it could well, go... Well, I was going to say that. They, they haven't got... They're, they're literally one place and one point below Sunderland. Uh, I mean, as a... And we've seen this. I mean, it's not like... A couple of seasons ago when we thought when Roger said, oh, I might start playing the youngsters and he didn't because there was still a chance we could end up in Europe. Um, so he, he stuck with the main boys. But, you know, once you've got relegated, you have got that shackle. And we've seen this happen at Leicester very often. We've had an awful season, but we've had a good last couple of games because we, we have been relegated. I'm old enough to re remember those times. And, uh, you know, you Sunderland and Watford haven't got Europe to play for. You know, it literally is playoffs. And Sunderland 52, Watford 51 points, Norwich on 67. They're not going to catch that up, um, you know, because they need, um, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six teams plus Norwich and West Brom, who we've got, we've got coming up, of course, uh, needs them to absolutely implode, which, of course, they're not going to um, that much. So, no, no. Are they now, do you think, owners, manager, etc., starting to actually think in this position at next season? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. And this is what I mean. Sometimes the players start thinking of next season. If they know deep down, and you'd like to think, minus uncertainty, which is what Leicester have at the moment, in, in, in i.e. being able to maybe offer contract extensions to certain players, you know, our, dip, our, our league next season may well be dependent on if these players want to or not. The majority of these clubs will have players as well where they'll know where this club's going to be next season. And if they're happy to be there and, and, and go again next season for a push for the playoffs and automatics, they'll stay. But they already know if they're going to be wanted by the manager, unless something was to drastically happen where he was get sacked and it, that might change their mind. But you know, these, these teams have probably got managers that are in it for the long term. They're going to be here at least for the start of next season. We know how impatient owners get, Watford. Um, so that might not always be the case. But you know what I mean, Chris? That, that, that implemented mindset naturally comes in that you start thinking about yourself for next season. Do I want to be here? Can I get a move? Can I put in performances that will get me a move? Do we start planning for next year? Well, a manager's already been talking to his team, uh, his staff, and going X, Y, Z, we need to get rid of, but, you know, V, mm. v F, and E, we want to keep. Funny name players, I know, but they're the players <laughs> at some point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. isn't there a player in this division that's got the, the last name N and G? His name's just Nook. No, I don't know how you I've, pronounce I've it. I've absolutely N -G. no idea. But look, we're playing Watford. Um, and this is how we're going into this game. Uh, on home form, Watford the 14th, uh, as it stands, based on the last five games. Uh, Leicester on the last five games away are 12th. Um, so it might not be the easy game, we think. I don't know, I think it will be an easy game. Uh, you know, I mean, Huddersfield beat them uh, at the weekend. Rotherham, Rotherham beat them before that. The deal. They got a, a creditable draw with West Brom. They lost to Leeds, fair enough, most, most teams do. Uh, and they managed to beat Birmingham, again, most teams do. Um, uh, goal scored, though, only three, but conceded eight. So that's not so good. Leicester, you can see there, two wins, two losses and a draw. The green ones are starting to appear again. Eight scored, uh, but nine conceded. Uh, that Chelsea game obviously throws it out a little bit. Um, the team's going across the bottom, Daniel. Should have gone to spec savers. Um, but uh, I mean, looking at that, it, again, you know it's going to be a tight game because it's at Millwall. But looking at that, it, it makes it look like a tight game again, doesn't it? 
Well, yeah, of course it is. And every game now, until the end of the season, it wouldn't matter if we was playing all bottom six clubs or all top six clubs. They're all going to be tight games, Chris. And and they're all going to be nervy games until a goal from, from Leicester's perspective settles the nerves. I, I mean, for form, realistically, this is probably the biggest part of the season, Chris, where form, home, away, top five, last five games, last ten games, you took it in a bin. You just chuck it straight in the bin because as we've seen already with not just who Leicester have lost and dropped points to, but who Leeds have just lost to, who Ipswich mm. lost to. Okay, it was a it was a, an East Anglian derby. <laughs> I was well proud of myself when I remembered it was a East Anglian derby in this prediction show. Anyway, but you know what I mean, Chris? That we we've seen at points little that they little things. I know I, I have to take pride in something. You know, my mum said she was proud of me. I'm not sure if that's the same thing, but you know. Um you know, this kind of goes out the window. It's it's just all, it, it's so obvious, but it, it, it's so true, Chris. It's just all about making sure we beat what's in front of us. And if we do that, come come the middle of May, Chris, that, 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 that it won't matter if we've had to do it by beating Millwall, Plymouth and bloody Blackburn Rope. You know, Blackburn Rovers out the last yeah. four or five games, it will literally be you know I, i'm geez. hoping i'm hoping somebody can um can can help me with this because i don't know if anybody has ever completed two trebles over a team in the same division in the same season in consecutive games because that's what leicester city could do we've just played birmingham that was the third time this season and we beat them for the third time Yes, yes, we are we now did. about to play Millwall, and I've got to say, I've got my prediction in, and it is 3 2 to Leicester um, because that's what we seem to do against Millwall this season. We played them in the championship. Um, Dakar scored just to let everybody know, Dakar scored, uh, and we won 3 2. We met them in the FA Cup. Um, Cassidy scored, and we beat them 3 2. Um, uh, like I say, I, I don't know where I'd even start to look for that stat, but what a, what a thing to say. Two trebles in consecutive games. Yeah, and I you know what? I'd take the same result outcome, whether it's a 3-2 or it's a 3-1. I, I, I would take it. Uh, it's going great. It's I just, look, again, I, it would be nice to do it as long as we do it. Again, I don't care if it's a comprehensive 4-0 win, which I predict mm. come on and stuff. Or if it's a 1-0, 96 minute, Dakar's, Dakar's looked the wrong way and it smacked him in the face and gone in, sort of got, I wouldn't care, you know what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. No, I do, I just, but I just, that, I mean, if like I say, just to win the three games twice would, would just be amazing. Talking to predictions, just to let everybody know, uh, the prediction show, which is normally on a Friday, um, isn't this week because obviously we are playing on Friday. So I believe, uh, Brad, that it's Wednesday at seven. Yes. Um, I will not be able to do the table, however, because of the Ipswich game on the Wednesday, because of Wednesday fixtures on, yes, yeah. there will not be yeah. an updated table. So if you're expecting to come on and see a table, I won't have done the math in time. However, yeah. I will give it, Chris, to post on the Facebook group and on the, the, the post on YouTube for you once I've got it done. And those involved, it will go into the group that we've got yeah. for you. So yeah. if you're wondering yeah. where it is, that's that's why. Because Dave is that's available. He may be on tonight. I don't know. But Dave is available um, to uh, to do that with you uh, um, tomorrow. Um, right. Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, yes. it's It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, so if it you... Well done, you know your days. I do, I do. I, that education wasn't wasted on me, you know. Uh, and if it, if you do know what I do on a Tuesday, uh, what, are you stalking me or what? Uh, get over to bbc.com forward slash Leicester City uh, because it's the Fans Voice Day. And I put a little, a little jokey one in this week um, because they don't like you just to comment on games because obviously they have, you know, that's what they do themselves. Um, and I didn't want to talk about PSR yet again. So I actually pointed out that um, somebody, Brian Clough, once said, you, you had, we had the better team but on paper, but unfortunately we played on grass. And I think these days you could actually replace that with, um, uh, instead of saying paper, saying FIFA. 
because <laughs> you can have the better team and win on that. But that that's different. Uh, but I did make the comment about when I used to play FIFA, I used to you know run the ball out for a throw in or pass to the opposing goalkeeper rather than shoot. Or um, what I or what I did because I was only a young lad when FIFA first came out. Believe it or not, I was only four years old when the first FIFA came out. I used to put it on amateur mode and uh, play on the fiver side and go and beat Barnsley about 15 nil. With Graham Fenton scored about eight. <laughs> if you remember FIFA 98, Chris, that's what I used to do. That was my do. first used... one. That was my first one with France was on the cover. Uh, but oh, I no, I had the other one. I had see. FIFA. That was road, that was road to N France 98. You no, got, no, it yeah. wasn't. It was FIFA. It was oh, FIFA. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah it, it was. was. It was FIFA. Yeah, yeah, it was. PlayStation, yeah, right. PlayStation <laughs> 1. But anyway, um, yeah. so I did make a point on my BBC post today that... Um, as bad as Hermanson's almost FIFA-like uh, cock-up was in the last game, it, uh, Almunia did it for Watford against, uh, against Leicester. True. We hit, um... Oh, all right, sorry, yeah. Uh, so, go and just to go and have a read is basically what I'm saying. Right, it's that time. Let's get score predictions in. We've got five minutes to get these in. Brad, you've gone 4-0, have you? Yeah, I'm going to stick by it. I'm going to stick by my predictions in the league. I've gone for a Luke special, in case everybody knows. I haven't done my league yet, uh, and you probably won't get them before the kickoff. If I'm honest with you, you'll get them sometime on Thursday, probably. Um, as long as it's before the Plymouth game, that's all that matters. Uh, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. And it'll be different to hear anyway, because I'm going to go for a 3-2 today, just for the sake of it. <laughs> so, just because that's what I'm expecting. Uh, Dave's, oh, I can't get in because obviously he's not in at the moment. Uh, Highfields, hello, hi, Highfields. Uh, Highfields has gone 3 1 to Leicester. Um, Boohoo, hello, Boohoo, how are you? Um, let's hope you won't be boohooing at the end of the game. See what I did there. He's <laughs> gone 3 1. Andre, in fact, we've had a, we've had a run of 3 1s, uh, because Andreas also went 3 1. And somebody predicted earlier further up. Um, you got start. Jeff's 2 0. Uh, just yet. Yeah, I was going to come back to that. Uh, somebody. To oh, it was, oh, no, it was Andreas. He, he, he was earlier as well. Uh, Jeff, hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Nice to see you, mate. It must be weird time over there. Or oh, is it normal time over there? I don't know. No, it'd be the middle of the morning over there for you, won't it? I think, Jeff. He's gone 2 0. Um, look, I'm going to put I'm going to put my my proper. I've gone three two, but I'm because it's my channel, so I can basically do what I want. You know, I, I am the Simon Cow with the extra golden buzzer. I'm going to have two predictions. I've gone three two as a joke because we've the other two games have been three two. But I'm actually going to go. My proper prediction is going to be two one for change. Uh, <laughs> Yvonne is in. Hi, Yvonne. Um, Waiting to look forward to tonight. Indeed, 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 indeed. Um, Barry's gone 4 2 to Leeds. Are you a Leeds fan, Barry? I hadn't I hadn't realized if you are, but you're welcome. Nice to have a nice, a nice Leeds fan in. Uh, George has gone 4 0 to Leicester. Ooh, no, well, um, Bar no, Barry's gone 4 2 to Leicester. He spelt it with the Leicester twins, how you say Leicester. Uh, yeah, silly Billy. Take calls himself. Here, are, Chris. Swap glasses with me. You thought that said Leeds. That says Leicester. That's how you say it. You got to say Leicester. Well, I can I just say I'm having to reverse everybody here because actually, according to this, you've all got Millwall to win because we're, we're we're away. So... Oh, God, the pedanticness, the pedanticness of some of them. <laughs> this is what's taking my time. Chris, take that back. Five nil says Boohoo. Oh, he's changing. He's gone from 3 1 to 5 0. Bloody hell. His optimism's gone up within two minutes. Yeah. Of I'll, I'll, have, I'll have whatever you're on. I'll have whatever you're on. Um, and Dean has gone uh, 3 2 0. I should have gone to Spec Savers. Yes. Um, I think I've got the wrong glasses on. Oh, 2 45 a.m. for Jeff. Um, I know uh, that um, Luke isn't up. Um, he may be joining us post match, though. Brad, thank you very much, sir. Um, I will let's see. Let's hope the foxes can maul the lions. See what I did there? Sadly, I did. But yes, Chris, apart from that terrible, 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 terrible pun aside, I, I shall see you at half time. Hopefully. Let's hope let's hope Millwall don't roar to victory. Oh fuck off. 
<laughs> Brad, I'll see you later, mate. Thank you very much. I know it's one way to get rid of him and stop him talking. Is tell a bad joke. <laughs> I'll talk longer if you keep it up. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey, guys, Ian Hume here. Hi, everybody. Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! This is the Lester Till I Die Watch Along Show. Join in the chat and don't forget to subscribe. Yes, it was a good segue. <laughs> Indeed it was. And here we go. 53 likes. Oh, sorry, 53 are in. I'm not sure what the likes are. Um, but there we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> still got time to get your predictions in if you want to. Um, Yvonne has gone three one. Well, I would add, yeah, I mean, I've I've gone two one seriously, but because we'd beaten them twice this season three two, I thought three two would be uh, a funny one to go for. Uh, obviously, I thought so. Nobody else did. Um, but there we go. There we go. Um, okay, so remember, guys, no spoilers, please. Um, it's as simple as that. I don't want to know the scores from any other team. Don't tell me what uh, Leeds are doing. I will read those out. I have the scores coming up here. And if we see scores, we don't know whether you are um, saying for us or others. So you'll just get kicked. It's as simple as that. So the best thing to do is don't, you know. Um, indeed, Ray. But then again, so a Plymouth that we've got um, on Friday night. So, mm-hmm. Chris R is in. Hello, mate. How are you doing? He's gone 4 2. And Nate, hello, Nate. Nate, who is modding with me tonight, and he will be, um, uh, he's got my um, Yvonne, I mean, 3 1 to Leicester. Yeah, I've got you down as 3 1, Leicester, Yvonne. Um, yeah, Nate will kick you out if you do any spoilers at all, and that's. If it's a throw in a corner or anything. <laughs> I hope so. I've got I, normally people have been saying to me, Why don't you jump up and celebrate when we score? Problem is, I'm actually sat here with my PJ bottoms on. You know, the, you've got those like lounge pants that you get these days. Uh, and don't laugh at me because Mark Goldbridge does exactly the same on the Man United channel, he does. Uh, the problem is, some of them aren't exactly best fitting. And if I jumped up too soon, um yes they may not jump up with me i've got a better pair on today so if we score i might just have to jump up the other thing is of course well is that um, i also have um my earpiece in so i can listen to the game which i'm not allowed to to play live or you lot here because uh i would be uh taken down by youtube so I do, I do have to be careful. I do have to be careful. But Leicester here uh, are in, well, basically the strip I'm wearing, that's the easiest way to say it. Millwall have got Sarek in goal, back four of Leonardo, Tanganga, Cooper, McNamara, four across the middle, Longman, Mitchell, Saville and Honeyman, and Fleming and Obifami are uh, the two up front. Neil Harris is the manager there. Ex-player, must be about the fifth time he's been back to manage them. Uh, a bit of an icon there, to be honest with you. And they're going 4 4 2. Leicester, Hermanson in goal, Piera, Vestergaard, Faze Doyle at the back, with Piera coming in the middle to support Winks. Uh, and then you've got uh, Eunice, indeed, Juice Behor, Mavadidi, uh, just behind Vardy, with obviously Eunice and uh, Mavadidi being the two strikers. It will be interesting to see, uh, will it not? Let me just move that camera so I'm more central. There we go. Be interesting to see if. Um, what sort of game Eunice has. Vardy is, of course, captain. Uh, I do like this strip, you know. 
I'm actually getting to the point where I actually, because you know, anybody that follows me will know that I like the um, the, the away strip, the black with the the white, the uh, blue going across. I've got two of those from the different times that we brought them out. Not the original before anybody says I'm not that old. Um, but uh, let's. Um, but this is this is going on me. This is going on me a lot more. Uh, it will. It will indeed, Dean. If you if you talk to me whilst the game is going on, uh, I might not reply to you because I'm not concentrating on the chat. To be honest with you, oh, Phil is in. He's gone one nil. Thank you, Phil. Uh, I I I tend to sort of have the chat off. So um, we're having a minute silence by the look of it. There we go. That was a minute silence or applause as it happened. I'm just remembering a former Millwall player. Uh, True Red is in. Hello, True Red. How are you? Uh, thank you for that. Like you sent it me just as I was about to download it. And then I went off now and I haven't downloaded it yet. But no, I like that that you saw. I'd, I'd seen it myself. I presume that was you on, on TikTok. Uh, but thank you. Thank you very much for reminding me. Um, Boohoo, thank you very much for the good luck. Um, we're not sure, Barry. We're, <laughs> to be totally honest with you, we are so not sure. So everybody's nil-nil at the moment. With Birmingham not playing tonight, they've dropped down to se uh, second from bottom. Uh <laughs> Under Sheffield Wednesday, because Sheffield Wednesday get the point because it's nil-nil, and we are away. So, as you can see, the clock is up there. That's the time. If you are in advance of that, keep it stum until I say something on the screen. Quite, quite simple. It's not a difficult rule. So, Leicester then, in there, orange tops, orange shorts, uh, orange socks and white shorts, and they are... Oh, indeed, he's given a free kick away already. They are kicking left to right. Millwall in the blue tops, white shorts, blue and white socks, kicking right to left. Oh, straight away from the free kick there. We've not even had a minute played. A free kick there. Lovely, well put in by the Millwall player. Put it across a free header there for the uh, Millwall striker. Uh, but a man someone went down and got to it well. In his, in his pink cerise purple outfit, is it? He's got the ball back uh, from Doyle. Let's hope he doesn't uh, do the same thing. There we go. Playing around at the back again. Anyway, Faz has got it. Jews behold. Back to Faz. A lovely ball forward. Doesn't quite get to, to Winks. Is that a free kick to Leicester? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I thought there might have been a free kick, first of all, to Millwall, but they got away with it. Yeah, they're just <laughs> saying already, uh, uh, the, 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 the commentators, Millwall fans already trying to get on the referee's back. Um, so, Doyle. Oh, Mavadidi gave it away and then they gave it back to him. He's got Eunice on the right here. He finds him a little bit behind him, but he gets it to him. He plays it back to Faz. Indeedy. Sorry, Ricardo, that was. Plays it forward. 
Bit of, bit of possession here for Leicester. Dewsbury Hall got it to Eunice on the wing. He's looking for options. He had a good cross course for the goal. Ricardo tried to chip it in, but he didn't get it over the Millwall player. Good play there from Leicester for a few minutes. Uh, Eunice tried something a bit spectacular there. Didn't quite come off. And it's with, uh, it's with Millwall in the centre of the defence, just inside that D. Coming up to the first three minutes, gone. No goals. Leeds kick off at eight o'clock, don't forget. Oh, the shouting for a handball there, I think, but the referee wasn't interested. The referee's going to have to be strong tonight. Uh, I think that's fair to say. Matt Namara with the free uh, with the throw in for Millwall, and it goes back to the defenders out to the far side. Although they reckon the commentator is just saying it was a blatant handball. <laughs> Just saying then, Neil Harris, the... Oh, good defending. A long ball into the box there. Great defending, I think, by Wout Faz. He chipped in the box there. No, it was um, Ricardo. Ricardo was doing a bit of defending. He's put it out for a corner. No, just saying, Neil Harris, the, the Millwall manager... Started off in League One, got the sack, went down to League Two, got the sack. He's now at the Championship with his old team. A lot of empty seats here at Millwall behind uh, Mad's goal. That lower tier, absolutely, there's about three, four fans there and a couple of flags. Jewsby Hall heading it out from the corner, but it goes back to the corner taker who whips it in. Oh, and that's come off out phase there for uh, a, a corner on the other side. I don't know why that is totally empty there behind uh, behind the keeper's goal. I don't know if it's the same the other end. But totally, totally empty. Not sure which end the Leicester fans are in. Comes in. Ooh. Eunice manages to get it, though. Can he bring it away? He'll play it back. He's asking for help. A oh, lovely, lovely long ball over the top. Oh. <laughs> take him, Mivan Davidini. Take him away, Mavadini. So go on, Marcel. Oh, no, his first touch was awful. What a lovely move. Good, Ben Jusby or Eunice. Eunice over the top. Mavadini got it. Quick touched him. Jusby Hall, who played the ball straight through. Mavidini ran onto it. His first touch was unfortunately too hard and it ran into the goalkeeper's arms. If he had just been able to control that, I think we would have been looking at 1 0. I've got me I've got my cider ready, but I've got this at the moment. So I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty fast-paced game. Oh, swung the ball in there, but Mads uh, came out and collected it. Pink and purple outfit he's got there. That was a lovely ball from uh, Dewsbury Hall, but that first touch on the return from Mavadini just took it ahead of him. And the goalkeeper... Oh, Millwall now coming away. Getting past Doyle. Plays into the box, but Vestergaard kicks it out. Leicester defending well and coming away. It's indeedy. Best of God with the ball. So Leicester calm it down again. Pretty much up and at them at a Millwall. Like I say, they have to watch that um that 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 that, that, that bottom of the table. Um Millwall. 20th, so they're only two places above and two points ahead of Sheffield Wednesday. And Sheffield Wednesday are playing uh, Norwich, so a tough game for them as well. Oh, 
Oh, indeed, he did well to cut that out there. Have a DD. Oh, he gets, he gets it past. Oh, it went out, apparently. That was close. Jim, how are you doing, mate? Welcome along. I thought it was true. I didn't even reckon, I didn't even look at the picture. I just saw the name. I thought, haha, I know who that is. 80 people in. Can we get the likes up, please? I don't know how many likes we've got. I'm sure somebody, shum, somebody, somebody will tell me. Well, Southampton are at Coventry tonight. Oh, no, Southampton are hosting Coventry. Millwall, uh, sorry, Norwich have gone 1-0 up against Sheffield Wednesday. Now, that is good news for uh, Millwall. Not good news for Sheffield Wednesday, of course. Oh, look, I really do hope, and I'm sorry if any Leeds, nice Leeds fans in, I do hope that uh, you get caught out with the EFL as well, with all these cheats you're calling. Dewsbury Hall. Oh, Vardy. Dewsbury Hall put the ball through. Vardy had a player on him, but he managed to get his shot away. Didn't really get the power behind it. Uh, the goalkeeper went down and uh, and got and managed to get to it. Yeah, and Leeds fans, one word is written, cheat. So, Leeds fans, just because you've had to put your open-top bus back in the garage. Uh, oh, he says, Leeds fans went mental over goal difference. They did. There was only one goal at that. So, Millwall, have it in defence. <laughs> I can hear the Leicester fans. Oh, come on, that's a foul. Yeah. Jamie Vardy, he's won more than you. So, up and over, it's going to go all the way through to the Millwall keeper. Oh, there's the first booking of the, se of the game has gone to Honeywell. So let's to play it forward. Oh, now Navadidi committed a foul there. I think I think that was given because of the crowd more than the referee. Accelerate. I agree with you. I agree with you. Why would you want to watch the Champions League? You win, Robert's talking a lot of sense. So 83 of you win. Um, and we have got 36 likes. Come on, guys. So 
So, so keeper takes the goal kick. It's a long, long ball up. Uh, completely different style to Leicester. And it's out now for Millwall throwing mid on the far side, midway into uh, the Leicester half. Um, we're not doing too bad, Ben. <laughs> exactly, Luke. Exactly. Thank you, Phil. I think probably, in fairness, Millwall have had the better of the game so far. Struggling to get it away then. Not sure that wasn't a foul or not, but the referee didn't give it. Oh, come on. Oh, no, he's played on. Now he's called it back. Good refereeing, actually, there. There was a there was a pull on the Leicester player. Uh, the referee signalled play on. Uh, Leicester didn't get an advantage. Uh, that was Winks that was brought down. Turned beautifully. Um the Millwall player, yeah, kind of had his arm across, went to pull him down. Uh, the referee went to play on. We didn't get an advantage, so he uh, so he actually... Norwich 2-0 up now. Norwich 2-0 up against Sheffield Wednesday. We could be seeing a big scoreline there. Literally 15 minutes in. Just a little bit in advance of us, but Norwich are 2-0 up. They look like they're going to be securing their playoff place. So, Leicester back with a Manson at the moment, just outside his box. Plays it just forward to Vestergaard. He plays it out to uh, Faz on this near side. He'll play it to Eunice. One, two with uh, Ricardo. Ah. And he goes out for throw in. Had three players on in them, Eunice. Hermanson to Winks. Ricardo spins. Eunice gets it, brings it inside, takes it back to Vestergaard. I think it's just the case of just calming the game down and just making sure that, you know, Millwall don't get any early advantage. So. Now, coming forward, Vestergaard running into the Millwall half. Ah, oh, it was a bad ball. It wasn't really a good ball for Dewsbury Hall. It went past him. So now Millwall can break down this left-hand side, but they decide to turn around and play back. Now they kick it forward, but just to a Leicester player. Ricardo goes all the way back to Hermanson. So, 16 minutes gone. Uh, at the moment, both of us have had a one shot, which was on target, and it has been 62% uh, possession to Leicester. So, Leicester still come in. Surprise! They've had the more possession, but they haven't particularly looked any uh, particularly dangerous.
Good ball in, but, but Millwall get it clear. Ah, Dewsbury Hall now. Ricardo takes a long shot, but oh, the Millwall player puts oh, puts his foot in. There's some, there's some, <laughs> some tackles going in there. <laughs> Leicester are really making uh, making uh, Millwall work for it now. Oh, Mavadidi, can he get to this? No, it's hooked out for a throw in by the Millwall defender. So, nobody really in the middle. Faz just in the centre circle. Plays it out to the Vestergaard, who goes back to Manson halfway into his own half. Passes it back out to Vestergaard. Who's just slowed it down. Oh, the wing said, well, who's going to get booked? <laughs> I don't think so. What did he do there, Winks? Oh, well, you know, it's one of those where he's got his arms up, but the Millwall player is kind of, yeah, saying, go on, pull me down then. Oh, tell you what, they are starting to look quite dangerous here. Yes, they're going to have to be careful here. Jamie Vardy up for Eunice. Can he control it? He's got a defender all over him. I think he gets a throw in. Can't believe they lost to Rotherham. Anyway, Ricardo plays it back to Faz across to Vestergaard.
Oh, Vardy. Uh, honestly, Millwall players are going down for anything at the moment. Southampton have gone 1-0 up at Coventry. 25 minutes gone there. Uh, so the two games, it's Sheffield Wednesday 0, Norwich 2, Southampton 1, Coventry 0. 0-0 apart from that. 66% uh, Sunday to Leicester at the moment. Um, Hi, Dino. How you doing? Wolves is in. They're, they're fighting for Wolves. They're fighting for, um, for, for survival. He's got in the corner flag for Millwall, but they've got it out. Still got it. Have this it. bouncing around. It's chipped into the box, but it comes off a Leicester player and it's a corner. Millwall are given a fair, uh, a fair old. Um, you know, they're, sure, they're they're not laying down and letting us take this, but they are they are literally, um, like I say, fighting down in that. They're only two points off the relegation zone, and there's about there's about ten clubs. I mean, one of them are already down, so that's probably nine. But twenty four minutes gone at the moment. Ball comes in. Oof. And Hermanson was fouled. Yeah, he was blocking him. He was blocking Mads. Mads couldn't get to the ball. So Faz out here now. A Manson in his sweeper keeper role doesn't quite get it to Mavadidi. It's headed clear. Have Leicester going to keep possession? Oh, Doyle. I mean, it was all over Doyle there, all over him. 25 minutes gone in this first half. Still nil-nil. Pretty even game. Leicester have got like two-thirds of the possession, but I can't say that, you know, they've, they've actually really done an awful lot with it. Only had two shots and only one of those have been on target. Oh, good, good challenge there by by Leicester. Eunice through. Jews be all crazy through. Eunice again. Oh no! Unfortunately, oh my God! Indeed, he was was probably clear. Eunice, he couldn't get the ball through to Vardy. Um, he, he wouldn't have been able to get that through. Millwall put it out for the for uh, um of an injury. Free kick wasn't given, and the the, the player went down. It was a lovely ball. He went. I don't. I don't think it was. I don't. Uh, they say Jamie Vardy saying he should have passed it to me. I don't think he could have got it through to him. If I'm honest with you. So the players down. And while the play is uh, while the play is down and there's no play, let me just ask you to uh, if you can support the channel, please. I appreciate it if you can. Um, other games are all nil nil, apart from the two I told you. And there's no changes in that. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday nil, Norwich two, Southampton one, Coventry nil. That will dent Coventry's. Um, Playoff hopes because that is leaving them at the moment six points behind um, West Brom in six, and Norwich have gone up uh, by one point into fifth. They've got seventy, just a high-scoring league. 
high scoring league this uh, this season. I mean, eighty nine points. They were just saying then on the commentary. Normally, eighty nine points, you'd be you'd be running away with it. Yeah, you but know, uh, uh, we're not at the moment. Leeds are kicked off. Uh, they kicked off twelve minutes ago. Nil nil there. Uh, they've overtaken um, Ipswich. They haven't played one more game, but Leeds are in second. They'll be getting nosebleeds again. Um, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist it. Couldn't resist it. Leicester Till I Die podcast on the Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Anchor, and all podcast platforms. Something is coming. Something big to this podcast. Hello, Chris. And of course, we are part of the Talk Sport um, podcast family. Ninety-three of you in, and we've got forty-seven likes. Thanks very much, guys. Can we get to fifty by half time? Please, that would help. <laughs> and then there's other that. I didn't see that, Nate, but thank you. <laughs> if only that was true, Nate. 47 0, I'll take that. Uh, the Millwall player is fine. He's going to come back on the pitch. Mm. It was up and under from the goalkeeper. It wasn't the best of uh, kicks. Every foul, Millwall fans are calling for it. So, joy or no? Leicester now. Doyle with a long ball, changing uh, changing flanks, but it does, doesn't get it past the Millwall player. But the Millwall player gives it away. Eunice, a little poacher there. Indeed, he plays it out to Mavadidi. He can't get the ball. He runs into the box, dribbles in. Maybe should have crossed it there. Now he crosses it. Oh, came over to Ricardo, but Leicester still have it. It's not a penalty. No, he's gone down the Leicester player. It wasn't a penalty, though. And Millwall kind of, well, they sort of get it away, but not not totally. Now Jewsbury Hall turns with the ball. He's going forward. He's looking for help. He gets it in the form of uh, of Doyle, Mavadidi. In, indeedy now tries to get it across, but it's a corner for Leicester. I think that's our first corner. I've got to say for you, Phil, it's hard for me to tell because in fairness to the Millwall fans, and they are shouting for absolutely everything, Every time a, a you know a, a Millwall player farts, they're asking for a, a foul. Uh, but fair play to them; they are making a lot of noise. So I can't tell whether it's uh, that's just a lot of a lot of empty seats behind the Millwall goal as well, headed clear from the corner by Millwall. There's literally three three fans sat behind the uh, Madison Manson's goal, and there's a lot of empty seats. Whether well, that's the away fans are not behind the Millwall goal at the moment. Juice Hall hits it. Oh. It's a corner. It's a corner. That was a good a good effort there by Jewsbury Hall. Oh, yes, it was. Uh, it, it came off the uh, Millwall defender. They've got a huge big screen. Absolutely huge. I could do with that in my lounge. He's going to make take the goal the corner again because it was a second ball, not exactly on the pitch. They possibly like the corner when they're taking the balls just overlapping a little bit. But anyway, the referee, this time, we swing it in rather than the short corner, and it's headed clear. There's a throw in to Millwall, just inside their own half on the far side. We've got half an hour of the game has gone, and it's still nil-nil. Forty-eight likes. Come on, guys. Two more likes. Ninety-five of you in. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate that, sir. I appreciate that. 
Are you new, Richard, or have I seen you before? It's another throw into Leicester. Chris is in. No, she's not. Um, she, <laughs> she decided not to go. Probably a good decision. I wouldn't want to go, to be honest with you. Just not worth the hassle. You go to football to enjoy it. And, you know, there's a, there was a video out a few seasons ago when we went to, to Millwall in the Cup and they were throwing stones and they bricks at the uh, Leicester coach with the players in and the police just seemed to be stood around doing nothing. Ah, I, don't, I don't see the point in going to a game that where you get that, really. I mean, obviously, that's what that's what Millwall want. You know, they, they don't want you to. They, they want, you know, no away fans if they can do. But, um, no, football should be an enjoyment. Anyway, the ball's up. It's headed into the centre circle by the Millwall guy, but he loses it. Now it's with Doyle. Mavadidi. Uh, Indeedy. Mavadidi. He turns with the ball. Can he go? Yes, he can. Oh, it's a throw in. Throw in to Leicester. Three quarters of the way into the half, uh, into the Millwall half on the far side. Fifty-five likes, guys. Thank you so. One hundred and two in fifty-five likes. Thank you very much. That's all I can ask for by half time. Um, I appreciate that totally. Appreciate it totally. Oh, breakaway then from Millwall, but it didn't work out. So, Ricardo now. Long ball all the way across field to Mavadidi. Oh, plays it down. Oh, it's just a bit too hard for Ndidi, from Mavadidi. Uh, but it does go out for a throw in. Hi, James. Hi, Paul. Don't think all Brighton's on the pitch, is he? Uh, sorry, on the subs bench. Oh. Thought indeed he was good. Indeed he kept it in play, but it was um, easy for the defender just nod it back uh, to his goalkeeper who picked it up. So goal kick here from Millwall. Southampton 2 0 up against Coventry now. The team that beat Leeds. Doyle now moving forward. Chips a long ball over the top. Can Eunice get to it? He did. Ricardo. Jews with all turns on it. But it's back to Doyle. Mavadidi on the far side. Good good passage of play here from Leicester. Doyle. Mavadidi. Doyle. Mavadidi tries to get it down, but oh, 
It's going to go out for a throw in right near the goal kick. Uh, goal kick, go <laughs> near the corner flag. Doyle gets it back quickly, goes all the way back almost to the halfway line. And Vestergaard. So Leicester just enjoying a bit of possession at the moment. Oh, is he, Nate? Thank you, mate. I haven't got it in front of me. Oh, it's going across the bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Hoisted by my own petard there. I'm trying to watch the match. That's why I just didn't think he was in. Eunice. We might see some changes later, depending on how the game's going. Because, of course, we're playing on Friday. Ooh. Doyle gets the ball. Wasn't expecting it, but it goes through to him. Indeed, he tries to get the ball across, but uh, his crossing hasn't been brilliant in this game, indeed. But I suppose that's you know not not what he's there for, really, is it? So Jewsby Hall with the corner. Doesn't get it past the first player again. Why is it with our corners? We just can't seem to get it past the first player. Mavadidi just stops the break happening there. Yeah, all bright and you're quite right on the on the on the bench with Daka Pratt, Fatawu, Inacho Chaudi, Justin Cody. And of course Stolarchik as the goalkeeper. <laughs> very true, boohoo. Very true. Boohoo, boohoo, boohoo. I'll, I'll go with boohoo. I never know, but I'm going to stick with boohoo. Um, well, you'd hope so, yes, because they are playing at a fair pace, in fairness, Millwall. Again, from a neutral's point of view, you'd say this was a good game. Honeyman can't get it past Ricardo. Didn't go out for the corner. Faz kept it in, but it does go out for a throw in. Almost level with the penalty box. Really, Wolves? Wow. Let's hope that run continues, eh? <laughs> There's a short. Oh. Oh, I, oh, thank God for that. That looked like a Leicester push on the player there. I thought he was pointing. I thought he'd pointed to the uh, penalty spot. I literally, for a minute there, I was like, <laughs> I really was. Indeed, Jeff, indeed. I was really... The, the, the player... The, I'm sure there was a push on the Millwall player, but there was a foul must have been before that. Dewsby behold, skips over the challenge there. Keeps the ball. Oh, but he's given it away. The Millwall player closed him down and forced him into the mistake. Oh, indeed, he just gets it back to, to Doyle, who boots it upfield. Oh, Vardy was there waiting for the ball to go through to him. Acknowledges the pass, but he's there. he was cut out before it got to him. Nil-nil, 41 minutes gone. Not his best, is it, Paul? He's not, he's not best at it. Then again, nor was Madison towards the end, let's be honest. It seems like it's going to be a long throw in. Number 18 for, uh, for Millwall to got, 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 look, look, get the defending right here, Leicester. 42 minutes. Nearly 43. It's a long throw. 
But they clear it, but only as far as Millwall. Now he's been thrown it in. He's going to boot it into the box. Oh! Chance there for Millwall. Uh, they, they threw it in. It was headed out, came back to the same player. He crossed it in. It was met in the box by the Millwall player. Nobody really picking him up. Uh, he headed it down. Mads got his body behind it. It was probably not the hardest save Mads is ever going to have to make. Out fast now. Leicester fans now starting to make themselves heard. Huddersfield have gone one nil up at Preston. I just feel the fighting for their lives at the bottom. Um, that moves Millwall down to one off the bottom. So Millwall now in 21st. It's a corner to Leicester on the far side. So Rotherham relegated on 23. Sheffield Wednesday 23rd on 42. Birmingham 22nd on 42. Millwall now are down to 21st on 45. So they need something from this game. They're obviously not going to drop into, um, or the goal difference is pretty similar, but they're not going to drop in uh, I don't, to die. I don't think Birmingham are playing today. Oh, so the corner comes in. Eunice has won it back. Good play by Eunice. Oh, fast there. Left it, I think. I think he tried to play the dummy. Left it for the player behind him. And then he just... Uh, the player behind him wasn't expecting it. Two minutes of stoppage time to be added on. We're already into the first first minute of that. Millwall are coming away now. They've got players free. Oh, good defending from Doyle. And then a free kick because the Millwall player brought down Ricardo. Oh, no, it was Mavadidi. Mavadidi back doing his defensive work there. Good to see. But they broke away then. It was one against three. Then the winger was uh, found. It was, and he play, found in the Millwall player. Doyle got stuck his foot out. Mavadini tried to get in. Well, that could have gone either way, but it did go in Leicester's favour. So we've got one minute now. We're into that second of the four of the two minutes that's been added on at half time. Uh, Leicester, uh, Millwall nil, Leicester City nil. I think this is. I think this is going to be the harder game of the two between this and Plymouth. And no disrespect to Plymouth. But Plymouth are fighting for their lives as well because they're only one place above Millwall. Well, played, advanced, played on, did the referee, but it was a high foot from the Millwall player uh, on Winks. So it's just going to be a throw-in now. Once he gets in the position that the referee is happy with. So now, can, they, can Millwall get the cross in? Yes, they can. Headed clear by Ndidi. Oh, and then it's a... <laughs> 
a, a kick that went up high and wide, and that's it. It's all over. It's well, not all over. It's all over for that half, and we'll be back in a few minutes. And we'll be joined by Brad, and who knows who else. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! Indeed, and it is half time. Uh, I can put my camera back in the middle while I'm just doing this. So the half time so far: Millwall nil, Leicester City nil, Plymouth nil, QPR nil. Battle basement battle there. Preston nil, Huddersfield one. Uh, Huddersfield doing themselves some good in their fight to stay up. Sheffield Wednesday nil, Norwich two, uh, Southampton two, Coventry nil. That is a surprise. That one is a surprise. Let me just do that a little bit. There we go. Um, uh, Leeds nil, Sunderland nil. They've only played uh, 37 minutes though, but it is nil nil here. Um, let me get uh, oh, let me get uh, the, the one half of uh, Beauty and the Beast. You work out which half it is. Um, but <coughs> hello, Dave. How are you doing? Hello. Sir? Where's the hello. beast tonight? Oops. Sorry. Where's the beast tonight? The beast was, is well. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I, I had to think about that then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh look! Don't don't worry about it. the light. Always shines shines on the right, just mate. Yeah. What do you reckon to that then? Well, from a neutrals, if I was a neutral, it's been a pretty much an exciting game. Yeah. But as a yeah. Leicester fan, no, worried. It's same old, isn't it? Unfortunately, first half stuff. I mean, it's kind of slow. Um, not quite so negative, but mm. definitely slow build up. With nothing at the end of it. I'm not no, sure Vardy's had a touch, has he? I, well, not not many. I will agree with you on that. I mean, the stats here, uh, they've had two shots. We've had three. We've earned all of those three. Only one have been on target. It, it's you, you, We don't look like we're winning, but we've got to accept, I suppose, Millwall are fighting for their lives because they are now, as it stands, 
uh, one place above the playoff zone. Yeah, but they're not very subtle about it, are they? I mean, we should Boy. be so much better than that. And I tell you I thought, what, they are putting the tackles in, aren't they? Yeah, and I don't know, it, it, it got better, but I thought the referee and linesman had nightmare for the first 20, 25 minutes. Some of the decisions, you know, but he seems to have got over it now, so perhaps just nervous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I tell you what, in fairness to the referee, I thought the Winks booking was a little bit... Um, yeah. Uh, Harsh. I don't think that was a booking. I think it was no. like only his first first one. Um, but he, um, the referee, he stood up to the crowd. I think, in fairness, because that crowd has literally. I said during the commentary, if if a Millwall player farted, you know, Millwall fans were calling for a foul and a yellow card. Yeah. yeah, but there's not many there, is there? That's the beauty of it all. It just look empty, doesn't it? I... Yeah, I mean, that whole goal behind Mads is empty. I think there's about three yeah. people down there and a couple of flags. Yeah. Um, and behind the other goal, it's probably a quarter empty. That's what I said last night with the, the disappointing attendances by the looks of it. Um, yeah. So it must have is, not I been... I mean, we are, we're, well, we were used while we were in the Premier League, which we're obviously not at the moment. Uh, we were used to playing 38 games. Here we're playing 46. Hmm. They are coming thick and fast. And it's, yeah, it's expensive business, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. You know. Um, and I tell, I tell you what, Chris, and good luck to all the Leicester boys that have made the journey. I mean, that is amazing. And you, you heard them all through the game. I mean, you can't, certainly can't say that they're not giving their all. No, and no. To go down to Millwall on what has been a really pissy, horrible wet night, certainly in Surrey and coming back down. Um mm. I saw the best rainbow I've ever seen, I must say, over the sea, if that cheers you not, up a little bit. Not, not been a completely wasted <laughs> night, that's it. <laughs> Indeed. The wife's out playing her trumpet or whatever it is, clarinet. It's, it's, so, it's, it's uh, by George. Quiet night in. Um, <laughs> all we need right, is three right, points. Oh, oh, no, no babysitting tonight? No, she's gone home. We took her home this afternoon, so it's oh. today. So, yeah, right. peace and quiet, Let's... mate. Good, good, good. So, be some quiet on the footy all to yourself. Yeah. Um, if Brad, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, mate. I'm here. Hey, mate. Yeah. Just and give me a sec. I'll, you... be, I'll be on camera in a sec. I bet Don't you haven't got many notes time. tonight, have you? No, no. Just I, I, this this is around. my notes. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was no notes to take, mate. It was these are mine. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a pen. <laughs> uh, yeah, between us, we have to. You're like, you're like the constipated mathematician. You'll sit sit down and work it out with a pen. Yeah, yeah. indeed. <laughs> Brad, I mean, what I, did you think of that I, half? Dave wasn't impressed. Yes, mm, I think we're all. Mm, that fell asleep. Do you think we expect too much, boys? Are we being too critical, or should we expect too much? We're top of the league. You know, we should be it's, blowing it's that, away. Look, it's it's not that, Dave. Millwall, the scruffiest set of players ever. It's like they'd go out their way to not oh, sign no. players that are more talented than just hoofing the ball in and, and sly tackling and trying to break legs. Mm. Uh, they're just a god-awful side. I hate bear, them, we must really bear in do. mind that you're very biased anyway. Well, yeah, that is true. It's, it's them or Stoke. But also, <laughs> we've been a bit too fancy. Yeah. We've been a bit too fat, a bit ricky dicky, I said, say, in it, and I don't like it. And Chris, I hate to point it out to you, mate, but you've got the right stadium, but the wrong badge in your picture above. You've oh, got the Birmingham, <laughs> Birmingham badge in the Millwall Stadium. <laughs> How long has that been like that for? There we go, we got there in the end. Only, only literally about uh, well, since Dave came and in about four minutes. Oh, blame um, Dave then. It's Dave's I haven't got my glasses on, so I didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that also, was one I hadn't updated. Talk amongst yourselves for a second while I go and do that now. Well, it looks I'm, right now, don't you? No, 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 he's not fixed. He's got to fix it, fix it. He knows I won't okay. let it go. He knows so, I'll just keep pointing it out to him. It's like when why are we? That. Why are we always so um, casual and you know com overconfident, cocky? Call it what you like, but we don't see that early ball quick enough, do we? We used to early on in the season. But now no, that's, not... just, that's very true. But I think we're we're in that critical part of the season, uh, Dave, where the instructions may be 
go for it when the opportunity is there. When we have had our opportunities, bet controlled by Mavadidi. Yeah. Um, he probably puts that away. Um, a couple of better passes would have given us opportunities. Fardy, I don't think he really could have done much more with the chance he had. No. He oh, he has that off balance and, yeah. and on, his, on his right foot. But it's just, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's one of them. So, you know... I think the cautiousness has been there and, and it's been something that he's in, he said all along that he wants us to build into that game and then really almost reserve the energy, let them run ragged because yeah. the way Leicester play football, much much like his, you know, his his former manager who, who was the, you know, who, who who educated him in the way of Enzo Ball, you know, you pass the ball, it isn't you that's doing the running around, it's your opposition and and one thing that has held Leicester in good stead this season is, you know, we have the quality on the bench. We have yeah. Fatu on the bench. We have, I think it's Ian Atra as a strike on the bench. We, You know, we have these players on the bench that we can, you know, bring on when they've got tired legs and, and, and are losing sight a little bit. Um and, and, and we can we can unlock their defence. It, it's what we've done. I know we've not been notorious for scoring late goals, but I would imagine if you looked at it over the season, we've probably scored more goals in the second half. We have late but, goals. We or, have yeah, on. Or late yeah. in the first half. Yeah. We don't really tend to get going. One good thing, though, and it has been pointed out in, in the comments, just about to hit half-time, it is still Leeds nil, Sunderland nil. So we're, no, we're not the only side struggling to break down a team with with, with not much going on. Are you happy now? That's a posh stadium for Millwall. I mean, I mean, it's a fancy <laughs> prison, isn't it? At least he's got the badges the right way. I mean, it should be Leicester <laughs> on top, but he's got them fictionally right for home. No, no, Millwall are on top because Millwall are home. Yeah, I know. I did say, I did just say that, Chris. Don't you get too shirty with me? <laughs> but it, it, I mean, looking at that picture, which isn't taken tonight, it, it's a very bleak evening, uh, and it is there. I mean, Wolves said here, basically, I think what you were saying, Dave, we should be crushing this team. Should we though? They are fighting for their lives. They are two points uh, and played one more game above Birmingham in twenty first. Birmingham have dropped because they're not playing until tomorrow. They've dropped into 22nd. But Birmingham, if this stays like this or or we go on to win and Birmingham win or well, win tomorrow, Millwall are in the bottom three. So, so we both settled for nil nil then, basically. No, but they are fighting for their life. Well, I don't think I don't I don't think they, they are. To me, they don't I, show it. You know, I think they've probably tackles. been slightly the better team. Oh, yeah, they have, but they've put more tackles in and they're hurting us a bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, they're fighting for their life, are they not? We're skipping out of tackles. You know, we're not getting there first. The, the, There's a couple of second balls we weren't even close to, especially towards the end of that first half no. when the thrower was, nobody was on him. You know, if yeah. he'd have been any good, he could have put the ball anywhere. And I think these... what I have noticed as well, the little bit of indecision, you know, we've we've got used to seeing Ndidi, and it, it, Ndidi's been the culprit. Well, him and Mavidi have both been the culprit, where they'll underlap or overlap each other, make that run, and then all of a sudden they'll go into a jogging pace as if they're not expecting yeah. the ball. But yeah. I mean, Mavadidi, he gave away, I don't know if he gave away a free kick, but he definitely got a throw in from him, just stood still, as if he expected the ball to come to yeah. him, as if he expected a better pass, and it kind of... um. I, I agree with Paul's comment. It's just popping up there about our corners. We've got three corner takers. All right, yeah. one on the bench, but technically we use our wingers now as corner takers. And I think we had five corners that half, maybe maybe more, but at least we had five, Chris, and four of them. There, well, well, three of them that that their defender got to first. I don't want to be you know pedantic, but as soon as you yeah, pointed out really my good. picture was wrong, I thought I'd point out. Oh, children, <laughs> behave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Sorry, Dad. Um, the, I, I, the point I want to make to you, Dave, I don't know if you've noticed this about Ndidi. He seems to be playing more on the left in this game. Well, we're not playing... Yeah. on the right. Yeah. Ndidi's running over, uh, or Eunice is running over, or Pratt, whoever's playing that role, is running over to get the, 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 the you know, the, the pass from, from the winger. And he's not there for Eunice to do that for. No, it does seem when Eunice gets the ball, he's got no options apart from going back. Mm. Which, you know, he's the same old, same old, isn't it? Um, we yeah. don't want that. We want somebody to put a ball through. Dewsbury Hall, we want him to play that ball through. We want, 
you know, a little bit of, I don't know, give them something to think about. Even, yeah. you know what, when we're doing that, I'd rather just smack the ball in the middle and get Vardy to shove his elbow in somebody's face, you know. Um, and uh, No, but... But make it, Have you ever thought about applying to the United Nations, Dave? <laughs> but make them fear us. They don't fear us anymore. We've had forty-five well, plus minutes, and they don't. They think this is easy. We can win this game. I bet that's what um, they're telling them at half time. Well, Twice we will see this. because the players are out on the pitch. Back so out. All right, guys. I am going to say thank you very much, both, and hopefully uh, we'll see you at full time. Well, hopefully. <laughs> no, you wouldn't see us, but whether we're cheerful or not won't be. Yeah. Yeah. I never said yeah. that. I just said see you. See you a bit, okay, boys. Thanks very much, guys. See you later. <laughs> there we go. So uh, let me just get all this set up again, um, which is easier said than done. Just waiting for the kickoff. Leicester are going to kick off the second half. And there we go. So we are in. I need to put my ear in. Millwall coming away straight away. Not sure where my earpieces are. Here they are. And it's immediately it's a goal kick, uh, which Matt Manson will take. So can we do better in the second half? That is the question. No subs. No subs have been made yet. Um so the same players that finish the other half, first half, will start this one. Uh, Leicester in the orange tops, uh, white shorts and orange socks, uh, kicking now from right to left towards the empty stand. And uh, Millwall, blue tops, blue and white sh uh, socks and white shorts are kicking from left to right. Leicester fans apparently are behind now the Millwall goal, but they must be up on the second tier, uh, I'm guessing. Hi, Matthew. How you doing, mate? <laughs> Where are you, Wolves? So. Nesta are sort of taking their time, it has to be said. And it is half time, Leeds and Sunderland. I think we've probably already said that. Uh, Huddersfield leading at Preston, Norwich leading at Sheffield Wednesday, and Southampton at home to Coventry are leading 2 0. So Mavadidi on the ball finds Doyle. Doyle back to Winks. Back to Faz. Plays it through. Lovely through ball there to Indeedy. Out to Mavadidi, into the box. Indeedy gets it back. Oh, a lovely ball up. Plays it down. Ricardo. Eunice. Oh, he tries to get it round, and it's a corner. That was a good, that was a good play. That's probably one of the best moves we've seen. But Eunice is down. Eunice is down. I don't know if he's, he, he was calling the ref over. I think he's down on his knees. Oh, I think he got hurt in that. Let's have a look. I can't see. He's behind the Millwall player. Um, he's up anyway. He's up. That's the good thing. So, Kieran Dewsbury Hall, what's he going to do with this corner? Chips it up. It's headed clear by the Millwall defender. Yeah. For the four, oh, Millwall is a good counter. Another another corner that went straight to a Millwall player. Do we need that uh, set piece coach back? The one that we had under Rogers? <laughs> maybe not him, but maybe another one. Winks. Eunice on the far side. Back to uh, back to Fouls. What's going oh, on? There's a Millwall player gone down. Winks kicks it out. Yeah, I think it was the one, the one that went down at the same time as Eunice. I'm 
not sure what was what happened to him there whether he got winded or it wasn't it wasn't a, 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 an effect from the first uh, challenge Yawning there, that's what this game's doing to me. <laughs> 128 of you in. Thank you very, very much. Can, can we hit 100 uh, likes by the end of the half? We're currently on 71. Brilliant, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> Trot attacks. <laughs> We're playing in this one, Wolves, the one I'm wearing. <laughs> hey, welcome. He looks winded. He definitely doesn't look. Are they going to have to make a substitution here? Yes, they are. Millwall are making a substitution. The honeymoon comes off. And SA is coming on for him. Oh, well taken by Winks. Plays it out to Faz on the far side. Chip the ball forward. Oh. Leicester lose it again, though. Mavadidi there. Oh, forced the uh, Millwall player into a mistake. And it goes out for a Leicester throw in. 51 minutes gone. Now the Leicester fans making some noise. Preston have equalised against Huddersfield. It's 1-1 in that game. So it goes back to the uh, Millwall goalkeeper who chips it forward. Completely different style to Leicester. And it's headed straight back at them. Head tennis there at the moment. Mavadidi tussling with it, with the Millwall player. He kicks it out of play. Is that a Leicester throw in? Yes, it should be. Yes, it is just inside, on the near side here, just in front of the uh, manager's dugouts. Doyle. Over to Faz. Ricardo, back to Faz. Plays it back to Hermanson. <laughs> Wolves. <laughs> you did see my reply. I did reply to your question, by the way. Hope you saw it. Uh, this is what we're wearing tonight. Eunice on the ball. Back to Faz. On the halfway line. Chips it across and changes the side. Lovely ball taken down by Mavadid on this near side. Indeed, he loses it. Indeed, he is playing on this left-hand side more. Good, good defending by Faz there. Again, all the Millwall fans shouting for a foul, but it wasn't. Oh, now we've now we've lost it again. Why is Indeedy on this left hand side again? Brilliant attacking from Ricardo, uh, defending from Ricardo. But Mavadidi loses out again. Doyle, Doyle doesn't get it. Oh, he's passed two players. This Millwall player. 
finally takes three of us to stop him. Now Mavadidi, he gets the free kick just inside the half. I tell you what, Leicester, they're making hard work of defending it. Every time we won it, we lost it. Then we'd get then they'd give it to us back and we'd lose it again. I think we do. I think we're hoping that Millwall, somebody said earlier, uh not sure who it was that they might wear themselves out. Oh, lovely ball through to Mavadidi. He's going to take it into the box, twists and turns. He had indeed he free, but he didn't use him. Doyle. Eunice. Oh, Eunice has a shot. Oh, he, he took. I thought he was away. Basically, the, the, the Millwall defender just threw himself in front of the ball. I think that would have been. Uh, Eunice got a clear, a clear shot on that. He played well there, Eunice. Probably his first chance he's had. Anyway, Mavadidi could have passed it to um, could have passed it to Indidi, but he didn't. He chipped it across at the box. Best of guard. Pass on the halfway line. Comes into the centre circle in the Millwall half. Short ball to Winks. Winks is probably going to looking for Eunice on the. No, he's not. He brings it over to this side, to the near side. Mavadidi, lovely takedown of the ball. Ah, oh, couldn't get past the Millwall player, and it goes out for a corner. Oh, well. Yeah, I got my clappers out. Hey, get your clappers out for the ladies, Chris. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> it's another corner. Will we get this one past the first man, I wonder? Lesser substitutes there, I can see. Will he get it past Fleming's head? I can see Inacho just warming up. Short one. Eunice tried to make connection, but it still stays with Doyle. Ricardo, it's a bit of a wasted corner, but we've still got possession. Faz, one, two with Ricardo. Plays it out now. To Indeedy, who's now back on the right. And it's another corner. Well, Faz, they're doing very, very well. Fair point, Sunday. So it's another corner. This will be the eighth corner for Leicester. Jewsby Hall holds his hands up. It's going to be going to the box, but will he get it past Fleming? Cooper there, though, this time ahead of Vestergaard. Yeah, they are looking at, they are playing it long. They said here on the commentary, um, and I have noticed it, there's a lot of long balls coming from, uh, from Millwall. Doyle, back to Vestergaard, on the halfway line in the centre circle. To Doyle here on the, this near side. Is he going to go back to Vestergaard? He is. Winks now. He turns and runs forward. He's got Eunice free on the wing. Stands and stops and plays it back to Faz. He plays it forward. Vardy he hasn't had many touches. Doyle here. Winks to Faz. Now Eunice has got it on the far side. Can Eunice work some magic? He can't because he plays it back to Valt Faze. Uh, he's pushed over, but it fairly. And now Millwall can break. Oh, it's 1-0 to Millwall. 1-0 to Millwall. Fifty-eight minutes gone. Leicester have lost the ball. And it's a goal. Millwall 1-0. 
Can't say they don't deserve it. Uh, uh, in fairness, the goalkeeper couldn't do much with it, but now Millwall are going to have the crowd behind them. It's Millwall 1, Leicester City 0. Thing is, I can't see Leicester getting back into this. So, half an hour for Leicester to uh, try and save this match. And I've got to be honest with you, I can't see them doing it. <laughs> possession football, if you can't keep possession, then it's useless. I think we're going to see some substitutions from Leicester. Pratt looks like he could be coming on. Yeah, we're playing it too slowly. You're quite right. Yeah, Jeff, stop thinking. <laughs> very rarely, very rarely, boohoo. I think he's about to Sunday. Millwall now. They're after a second. It's a goal kick to Leicester. So, substitution for Leicester. Fatou is coming on. Fatou for Eunice. Eunice obviously just missing that goal just before they broke away. Um, is one substitution going to be enough? Here we are, 1-0 down, paying it around at the back. George, we won't see two strikers on, unfortunately. Look, Millwall aren't bothered about this. Millwall are quite happy for us to play it around the back. So Millwall have moved up from 21st to 17th. That's how tight it is at the back. Mavadidi can't find Basley's way through. So we're still top, but only by one point from Leeds. And Ipswich are still, uh, they've got to play tomorrow. Of course, they're playing Watford tomorrow. So Hermanson, 62 minutes gone. Faz. They're just comparing this to the Bristol game, but we had more chances in that game. Choose me all lovely turn. Now it's out to uh, Mavadidi's got it off Doyle. Plays it to Ndidi. He goes out to Fatou. We need some magic from Fatou. Ricardo plays it through, but it goes down. It's an easy one for the goalkeeper to go down and save, and he will take his time. 63 minutes gone. Millwall 1, Leicester City 0. I mean, we keep saying all these wonder goals that the oppositions are scoring. We said that with Bristol. But wonder goal or not, you know, we, we should be...
So anyway, one nil, sixty four minutes gone. Mr. God, lovely defending, gets the ball back to Manson. Plays it to Winks. Winks now coming forward. Maybe a little bit of urgency now from Winks. Chips it forward. Oh, Kandanga, good defending. Yeah, Leicester went, went for the, the, the long ball over the top there. Nearly worked for them, in fairness. Sophie, hello, how are you doing? I hope you are right, Sophie. I hope you are right. Um, ball through there, but it goes all the way through to uh, the goalkeeper. Hundred and sixty three in seventy two likes. Can we get the hundred likes, please, by the end of the game? Millwall again, lovely through ball there on the far side. And they got they got players over. Oh. Oh. He kind of got the block in fact, who was sold a dummy there. Anyway, we've ended up on his arse. Seventy-four likes. There's gonna be a long throw in here from uh, Millwall. Literally got. We've got ten players plus the goalkeeper defending. Now can Leicester counter attack? Not something we do very often. But Winks has gone to Mavadidi here. Oh, plays it in. What a fucking awful ball. And now Millwall can counter-attack to us. Oh! Fast put did enough to put him off. Didn't take over Femi out because he would have given a penalty away. And... Uh, the, <laughs> Mads managed to make a save If that would have gone in I think it would have been game over Boo hoo I think you could be right Paz Lovely through ball, though, for Leicester. Indeed, he gets it over. Oh. Chooswell couldn't quite get to it. The Millwall player got to it first. And Millwall are breaking away. They are really fast on the counter-attack here. Oh, Fatawa's got... Oh, for Femi shoots. Oh, is offside. Oh my god, the ball went up there. The Millwall player headed it down. Madsen Manson didn't know he was offside, made a good save. If you're new, please also subscribe. 160 in. It's free to subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. And it's even freer to like. We're up to 77. Come on, guys. 23 more to get to the 100. Fouls with the long ball all the way out. Ah, oh, Mavadidi. Mavadidi tries to get it round the player. Gets the ball round the player, but then he can't get round the player. And Millwall have it again. I can't see Leicester getting anything out of this game at the moment. Oh, good defending for Ricardo, but he loses the ball, but it's out for Leicester throwing on the far side. Coventry got a goal back. Southampton 2, Coventry 1. 
Will we get a goal back? I don't think so. Not at this point. It's a corner for Leicester. What's the point? I have to say, what is the point? Simon, hello, mate. How are you? Nice of you to pop in. Thank you. I hope you and the family are all well. Jewsbury Hall with a goal kick, which I doubt we'll even get past the first man. We haven't done all night. This could be a first. No. It doesn't get past the first man again. They are, that's the thing, Simon. They are fighting for their lives. And they deserve to be 1 0 up. Ah, uh, but we are. We are, Craig. We are, unfortunately. Doyle goes all the way back. 70 minutes on the clock. All the way back to Hermanson, going the wrong way. Jamie Vardy's done nothing today. I tell you what, if, if Dakar had done this, uh, done the performance that Vardy had done, everybody would have been going mad. <laughs> Who knows, Barry? Who knows? Mavadidi, indeed, he crosses it over. Fatawu came in there at the far side to meet the ball as it was crossed over by Ndidi, but it was too high for him, in fairness. It was too high from the cross. Oh, they probably well, hmm. But he couldn't get direction on it, and it goes wide and high and into the stand. Now, three changes. Vardy is off. Vardy is off for Ian Atchu. Pratt is on for Ndidi. And Justin, is it on for Doyle? Yeah, Justin on for Doyle. Uh, so, just to say, 71 minutes, three substitutions. Uh, Ian Acho now has got the chance to show what he can do. He's on for Vardy, Pratt for Ndidi, and Justin is on for Doyle. So, we're still losing 1-0, though, 72 minutes. Vardy, Ian Acho, Ndidi, Pratt, Doyle, Justin. Those are the changes. The free kick there. Oh, he was number twenty-three. We're into the back of uh, into the back of uh, Dennis Pratt there. He's still holding his back, but we take the free kick quickly and short. Vestergaard over to Faz. Winks. Just asking then if Millwall will get tired. I can't see it. They're coming away again, breaking away. But less about 73% possession, but done sweet fuck all with it. QPR 1 0 up against Plymouth. That means Plymouth will be fighting for their lives when we play them on Friday. Vestergaard just clears up at the back and turns with the ball and starts to bring it forward. Uh, 
Leicester, Millwall are going, sorry, for the ball. They, they, they want the ball more. They're getting the first challenges in. God almighty, a brilliant move there for Millwall. Good cross, but nobody on the end of it. That should have been, if that, if that was met, that would have been 2-0. Oh, that was lucky. Leicester got away with one there. 75 minutes gone, 15 minutes to try and save things. Still 0-0 at Leeds. Oh, the fem is going off. So, Obafemi is off for Millwall. Bradshaw on for for Millwall, obviously. <laughs> Wouldn't be coming on for anybody else, would he? There's a throw in for Leicester. Somebody give him a chance to play to 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 throw the ball to. There's nobody there. Come on. Plays it long. And my God, Leicester, give him. Seventy seven minutes gone. Less to get the throw in, referee and uh, linesman can't agree. But every time, every time Less to get the ball, they're being closed down by Millwall. We can't close down. Playing rubbish. We are playing rubbish. There's no ball boys either. Players are having to get the ball themselves. Millwall there trying to close him Manson down. Having seen what happened the other day at Birmingham. That's a free kick. Seventy eight minutes. Can anybody see Leicester getting a goal here? Because I cannot. It's free kick. They nearly scored after uh, less than a minute from a free kick. Tarwood, good defending, back to Manson, who just boots it upfield. Not one Leicester player in their half. And it's headed all the way back to the goalkeeper for Millwall. 12 minutes to go. Long ball up for uh, kick from... Uh, the Millwall goalkeeper, so it's not even at his end, so there's no worry for him. Again, nothing there from Leicester. This is a poor performance.
So Faz on the uh, edge of the circle comes into the uh, Millwall half. Oh, and gets a free kick. Oh, quick free kick taken there, but again, defending by Millwall. Eighty five likes, guys. Eighty six now. Thank you. <laughs> Eighty six likes. Fourteen off. <laughs> Fourteen off the hundred. No, I mean, the ball's going the wrong way. The ball's going back to Hermanson. Ten minutes left. We need the ball up the other end, guys. Mavadidi now. Can he get round the player? No. The goal kick. Good point, uh, good point, Simon. Oh, Mavadidi loses it in the centre of the park. I mean, this is this is. I mean, Millwall, like I say, having jumped up from twenty-first to seventeen with these three points. Ricardo takes a shot. Oh, it's saved. It was Pratt. Lovely ball through for Ricardo. That was probably the best shot or the best attempt we've had all game. Oh, he actually couldn't get his head on the cross from Pratt again. It's a bit late now. Oh, gives Ricardo a free kick there. I thought I thought I was going to get a book in. Savile's got a book in. To be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a free kick to them. Oh no. <laughs> I've just seen the follow-up from the free kick. He tried to play advantage of the referee. Good referee. He tried to play the advantage. Didn't come off, and then he called it back for the free kick. Eight minutes left. It's free kick to Leicester. Harry Winks short. To just to I'm not sure who that was. To be honest with you, oh, plays it in, but again, Vestergaard on to Justin. <laughs> oh, because again, the two ball cut out. They've got it on the far side. It's a throw into Millwall. Seven minutes now. I'm not surprised. The player's gone down with cramp. I'm not surprised. They've run their they've run their socks off Millwall. That was a good good save. The goalkeeper went down to save it well from Ricardo. He scored those before, but not that time. Referee just saying, yeah, you got cramped, but it's time's getting added on. Uh, warming substitutes up now are uh, on Millwall. Going to waste a few more minutes. Can't blame them. Can't blame them at all. We would do it. No, he's not. He's putting his jacket back on. The long phone coming in from Fleming. Preston now 3-1 up against Huddersfield. Huddersfield had taken the lead, but Preston would come back 3-0. 
Six minutes gone. Jewsby Hall. Not really done much in this second half. Leicester. I think Millwall would have liked the advantage, but it was a head injury. But he's got he's got up. Seems fine. A bit late now though, Phil. Five minutes. Seven shots we've had. 72% possession. Done fuck all with it. <laughs> you and Robert says still plenty of time. It's not. Leicester throw winks there. A, 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 a very, a very bad, uh, bad touch. Aberdeen's got the ball on the edge of the box. Hasn't got anybody supporting him. But he does get it to Justin, who chips it in. Oh, easy ball, easy ball. We've not we've not been on this game. We've not been here. This is the this is the team that turned up against Bristol. My 2 one still on, of course. Um, <laughs> Daco is coming on. Winks is off. Wow. So we've got we've got two forwards on. So no winks on. Yeah, less than Oh, that was a nice back heel there for Mavadidi, who was then bundled to the ground. And Jews we all can't even get keep the ball in. 88 minutes. So the goal scorer is coming off. Winks finally makes it back to the dugout. Eighty nine minutes. So, how many minutes is there going to be? As I've just said on the telly, there should be a lot, but...
Russ has been banned for um, spoiler. How you know how many times, Russ? Are you thick or what? You know you don't do spoilers, but obviously brain dead today. Seven minutes left. Pratt to Fez, Fez. Millwall get it away. Pratt had a heavy touch there. But still 1-0 to Millwall. Still 0-0 with Leeds. Oh. Crossfield pass didn't get to Mavadid. He was headed out. Just as with everything that Leicester have done today, it just was not good enough. Tawu, who's not really done much since he's come on. Oh, my God! How did that not go in? Oh, my God. It was a great cross from Fatawu. Oh, I mean, the, the band had got five players on the fucking line. Ninety, uh, ninety-four, ninety-five likes. Five off the hundred, guys. Throw into Leicester quickly. Taken. Four minutes left. Was that the chance that's gone now? Justin cross to Faz. That was the first, the first thing really Fatou's done since he came on. Leicester guard. Inacho. Oh, goes for the return from Dewsbury Hall. It was just a rubbish ball. Justin gets it back. Pratt. Mavadidi. He's going to chip it. Oh, oh, it's actually fair play. Gets to Fatteru. He goes for a shot, Fatou, but it comes off. They've got every player back, every player back, Millwall. Fatou, oh, gets it in. And they had eight players defending in the box. Two and a half minutes. Israel, Justin, Mavadidi chips it into the box. Jewsbury Hall doesn't take a shot, gets it to Mavadidi. On to the right hand side. Woof, woof, woof. He went through one of his hallmark shots into the corner. Is that the last chance for Leicester? 99 likes, guys. <laughs> Oh, 
No, it's gone down, down to 90. No, no, yeah, 99 likes. Come on, guys. One, one, two more. 164 in. We're looking down. It's 1 0 to Millwall. They've deserved it. They have deserved it. So, booking for, uh, for Millwall, probably for time wasting. Uh, again, can, can you blame them? No. Best of God to Justin now. They need to get this ball forward. Plays it across field to Valt Faze. Plays it through. Pratt. Pratt. Oh, great run from Pratt. Chips it over. Oh, Dakar. You know what? Why have we started playing? Started playing at full time, 90 minutes. Less than a minute to go. All the other games have finished apart from Leeds. Ten seconds to go. Doesn't get it. Justin had the ball, but he doesn't get it past the midfielders of the throw into Leicester. <laughs> Millwall fans are shouting for the final whistle. And it's over. It's over. Millwall win. One nil. So, Leicester's stuttering, and I have to say, stuttering end to the season continues. And we'll be back. We'll be back after this. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch 
Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die. Independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans for the fans. Follow the podcast on the TalkSport Fan Network. And hello. And I noticed we've got... Uh, we've got hatred for Dakar. Uh, Paul... What were you fucking watching? What was Vardy? Vardy was shit as well. Um, did we really pay 23 million for Dakar? Look, you know, Vardy, shit. More shit than Dakar. I don't actually remember Vardy having a chance, did he? Um, I don't think he created one. Um, so let, you know, let's get off this Dakar bandwagon. He had one chance. He was on for three minutes. How can you fucking judge him, you pair of plonkers? I respect your opinion. I really do. But you can't say it was shocking when he was on for less than 10 minutes. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not confident about the Plymouth. I'm not. You know, they've they've uh, uh, they've drawn tonight. Uh, Jeff, uh, very disappointing to say the least. Uh, it was a shame we lose. We deserved it. We deserved it. Uh, it was garbage, John. The whole team was garbage. Apparently some people, well, again, what were you fucking watching, Luke? He was on for nine minutes. How can you fucking say he was garbage? I'm sorry. You, you, you're talking shit, Luke. You're talking shit. Um, uh, and any, anybody that comes on and says anything about Dhaka, I'm just going to time them out. He was on for nine minutes. He was. He had one attempt. The whole team was shit. Get off this fucking Danka bandwagon. I am bored to death with it. And I don't care whether you are mods or not mods. If you carry on, I'm going to kick your ass out the channel. The whole game was garbage. We're right there. Um, that was not a good team. No, it wasn't. Um, look, you know, he got he got on the header. I think he had one effort, which was one more than I remember Vardy having. Um, of course, we still support Leicester. We'd support Leicester if they're in the uh, if they're in the conference. Um, totally agree, says Matthew. Uh, who's watching Leeds game now? Well, I've got it on. Uh, Daka wasn't on long enough. Exactly, eleven men on the pitch. Exactly, but you know, some Leicester fans. Always had this agenda. We've got to hate one player. Chilwell, whoever it is, let's hate them. You get on the pitch and do better. Um, Vardy never had a pass made to him. Daka missed the header from three yards. So, so why didn't he go and get the ball, Vardy? I'll oh, fuck off the pair of you. Jesus Christ, you're boring the arse off me now. Yeah, he is. He's a punching bag for fans who haven't got the brains to say, well, what about the rest of the team? You know, 11 players. 10 minutes he was on. He had a bad uh, one bad header. Have a go at Fatawu. Have a go at Mad Mavadidi, Unit, all the others. Oh, no, 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 no. We've got to, we've got to have a go at Dhaka. There because that's all we can do. We haven't got the brains to say anything else. Fuck off the lot of you. Blazers, you're boring the arse off me. Right, let's get in. Uh, in. Let's get my, my colleagues in before I totally lose it. Um, Hello, I'm Chris. Fed up. I'm just fed up, um, mate, uh, Neil. Absolutely fed up uh, with the, uh, the this attitude of it's Dakar's fault for everything. I'm sure if you, if you wipe fucks off and has an affair with somebody, you'll blame Dakar for that as well. Jesus Christ. Get some brains, people, please. Dave, that was shit, wasn't it? Hello, Chris. Hello, Dave. It was terrible. 92 minutes before we had a 
any sign of quality, I think it was. I'm embarrassed. I really am embarrassed by it all. Um, I mean, we could have made a real point tonight and we didn't, none of them looked interested. I mean, I don't, you know, you can't pick on people individually because they're all poor. Apparently we can. Apparently well, you can call Pats and Daka. It's well, fine. You, you're, you're, you know, you, you, it's Pats and Daka fault that we're being charged by the EFL and the Premier League, apparently. If you're a striker, you're going to, it's like being a goalkeeper. You miss a chance, you get bollocked. You, your goalkeeper makes a mistake like Mads did on yeah, Mads Saturday, didn't get this whenever well, it was. Vardy, Vardy missed four against Bristol City. He didn't get the sort of stick that Dak has oh. been getting. It's just frustration by the boys. It's, you know, it has yeah, to come it's out frustration. somewhere. Frustration, it's, it's pettiness and picking on a, one player because well. that's what Leicester fans do. I, didn't, you know, I, can't, that, I, I can't remember seeing that thing you were saying about Chilwell because I always liked watching him play. I did. Yeah, he got stick, Dave. He did. He did always it? got stick. Really? I always saw it on social media. If Leicester lost, it was it was always but chill. Chilwell didn't do not. this. Chill. I didn't do that. No, I, I don't get Personally, that yeah. you'd never you never see me blame any 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 one individual. But it's all Susan Whelan's fault. We lost tonight. It's all <laughs> her fault. She wasn't there. She what, about been the there. what about the other guy? Yeah, uh, Aaron Rudkin. It's their fault that Mavidi yeah. didn't control it better in the first half. It's it's it, it, it's. To it's be pretty, fair, I thought I thought he was poor as well. It's top. It's top fault that Ian Atcher had one cleared off the line. It's it's really? pretty through the tea ladies' fault that we didn't try until the ninety second minute. Like Let's be honest with you, if, if Daka if Daka hadn't come on, people would have still been blaming him. Look, the full times as it stands: Millwall one, Leicester nil, Plymouth one, QPR one. Everton, uh, sorry, Everton, Preston 4, Huddersfield 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2, Norwich 2, Southampton 2, Coventry 1. Leeds are in the last minute of their game against Sunderland. In fact, they've played over the number of... There's the goal kick for Sunderland as well, Chris, so this will keep us top. Let's just see what's going to happen. The goalkeeper's got it. Uh, I don't want to oh, know I'll any results. I do not want to know any results in the chat. Um, because somebody did that earlier about the timing, and I kicked them so into 94 minutes. And it was plus you've been three. doing a lot of kicking tonight, Mr. F. You are there just been some dickheads in tonight, <laughs> you know. cheers, cheers, end, mate. end of end of you know, you know, there's no spoilers. There it is, it's all over, nil nil. So, oh, thank god, thank you, Sunderland, for saving thank our Thank you, I've got to say, thank you, deserve. Sunderland, although. What the hell are you wearing, Sunderland? A pink and purple ensemble. Uh, they had um, eleven madness out there. Pinks, pinks madness, 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 madness out there. I will take. You know what? You look be a lady tonight because we were dreadful. We were boring, but not as boring as Leeds Sunderland. So you know, I'll take that. I mean, yeah, just just think we could have been. Well, I know it could have been. No, sorry, no, sorry. Actually, I need to correct myself. Sorry, it's Dakar's fault. Sunderland didn't win the game. We could have been Couldn't, four Dacca, clear, couldn't, couldn't even do it for Sunderland, could you, mate? Useless player is our Dakar. <laughs> we do make life hard. <laughs> well, one for thing it will so. do, it probably means that the Leeds fans won't be quite as vocal as if they'd won. Um, well, I mean, it looks second, but that's it. <laughs> Brad, I haven't even opened my cider yet. That's how pissed off I, I am. I'm on, I'm on the vodka, mate. I fucking could. Kathy said, Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, fuck it. I'm going to have a vodka. Language, <laughs> a very I large, neat one. It um, just, just frustrates you, doesn't it? I can see why. I see people react in different ways. I get that. I can see why. I mean, you know, I was sitting there cursing Mavadidi because we're so one dimensional. I knew what we were going to do before the ball got to Mavadidi and indeed he went down. I mean, it's, that's the only moves we had. We had a right winger. I don't know why, because he hardly got the ball. Uh, so he got took off. Um, only when the substitute uh, was that Agu came on or went off. I'm, I'm just all confused now. Um, but we actually did anything. Eunice went on side. off. Eunice went off and Fatou came Fatou on. Fatou came on, and then we we yeah. did something because he got the ball. Eunice didn't get the ball. And I don't we, think Fatou did did much to be honest. Well, with ninety second minute, and we made two crosses into the box. That's all he did. Our two best chances of the second yeah. half, weren't it? Yeah, but that was we, in about the last. Well, that was after the full time ninety minutes. Yeah. time, wasn't 92 it? Ninety two minutes. That's that's what it was, and 
that was the first bit of quality we showed all night that's embarrassing really is embarrassing i don't know whether it's one dimensional play because we still have uh Woot at the back looking like he was on a sunday stroll still playing the ball casually to each other you know now whether they just to be fair, that over Femi had him on toast. He's emptying him out of his back pocket like that. Yeah. Right back's emptying Mavadidi out of his shorts pockets. We were, we were all in areas today. Yeah. Let Let me just say this from the start. Fair play to Millwall. They yeah. oh, won yeah. that game. It was a wonder strike, but then, you know, that yeah, happened was, against Bristol. You know, it seems to happen a lot to us. We can't, you know, say, wow, well, we've got beat by a wonder strike. We've got Bristol, no plan B. Bristol. Millwall wanted it more. They deserved. They they were twenty. They were in the well. They were in the bottom three, but they were they were fourth from bottom. Um, why aren't my fucking mouse working? Uh, they are now seventeenth. Fair play to them. They outplayed us. They wanted it more. They were first to every ball. They were second to the balls that they weren't first to. They could pass to each other. They were everything that Leicester weren't, Dave. Yeah, and we made substitutions that I, I really wondered why because you know there, was, there didn't seem to be a plan then I, I didn't I can't remember seeing any Acho really um, I mean I know it's not long to come on I'm not criticising him I'm just saying that we didn't seem to have another plan because we still played the same way when the, the ball was never going to do anything in our off you know I mean why not give it a go we eventually had two <laughs> forwards on albeit the 75th minute or something um, and you know we didn't play up to them Here's, here's a better question for, for him Dave since the war's ends over maybe to you and Chris why did he decide in the 87th minute to go two up front <laughs> why, why why wasn't that when he put Ian Acho on he should have put or he should have he should have shown all his cards yeah he should have made all of his subs no, it's just, it's 80, we know his reactions. We, yeah. the, the one thing that really piddles me off about Enzo more than anything is he's a reactive substitute maker. Yeah. You notice the second their goal went in, bang, sub. Yeah. Okay, sub. We gotta make a, we it's it's like it's like he's got this voice in his head that says, if we concede, we must make a substitution. Because the second that goal went in, and, and look. I, I I wrote not many notes at all, but one big note I did write, Chris, was take the Vardy chances out of the Bristol City game and just run it back. Because that's yeah. exactly what happened. A long ranger, you know, if they deserve it on the basis of play. Oh, what? Sorry. Did he come on on Tonto? On no, the Lone Ranger. Silver. I meant long ranger. I said long ranger, not lone ranger. Oh, you, sorry. You. I no, I like the, I like the play on words. So, yeah, Tonto was there, bloody Really, the whole of Africa were probably there defending. But my point is, Chris, exactly the <laughs> yeah. same as Bristol. Couldn't break through them. Bog standard, rough, scruffy football. We couldn't break through them. We couldn't figure a way through it. And then a wonder goal, and it was a wonder goal. It was a fantastic strike. Take nothing away from him in Millwall. And then we just allowed, we almost allowed them up until that hundred, uh, until that ninety. It's because I saw you say that. Saw that pop up. I said hundred, but until that ninetieth minute. Where for some reason Millwall felt the reason to go for the kill and get that second goal, we didn't have an answer. No, because you know why, Brad? Because they flood the midfield, they crowd it out, and that's how we play. We play quick balls through, flick them off, and follow them up. But we couldn't because there were two or three Millwall players. You play the balls out wide, and they know what's going to happen next, so they cover for it. You know, they put two on Mavadidi, they put um, somebody watching the runner, and there's no quality there and you know we people we said this what three months ago people will suss us out at some stage is there a plan b and the answer is no and that's the worry tonight tonight enzo got out thought by a manager that started the season in league one got sacked ended up in league two got sacked from that and has come back to millwall and he completely completely um Got out but, thought by him. But to be honest, Chris, so could the three of us, because we know what's going to happen. We know, you know, we got to do is watch two or three Leicester games and you know what's yeah. going to happen every time. Yeah. And that's, you know, they play, why not play one winger for a change or why not play two central strikers or do something? Because it's clearly not working. Mm. If it was working, I'd say, great. If Don't 
change it. It's not bust, but it is bust. And we we looked incapable of doing anything tonight. And all those fans that travelled down from Leicester need an apology for that performance. And I hope they get one because I uh, sitting here in the comfort of my armchair supporters, um, you know, I was embarrassed. And I've done those treks in the pissing cold and wet to away games when we've been hey, shit. I've done those treks to home games. Well, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> but, I mean, I, 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 I want to ask you. Yeah. Uh, 2-0 at Burnley. I've, and you know, I want I've to ask you, Brad. You need to, tell, you me, need to tell me what we're doing at off. orders. Pardon, I didn't hear you because Dave was still waffling. Fuck, me off. <laughs> I know, I was hoping you'd get the hint that I was asking the question, but you did. Love you, Dave. Right, uh, Brad, uh, Dave. Uh, right, go again, Chris. Right. Explain to me what you're supposed to do with the corner. Because I want to, to record it. Let me just, I'm just going to press a separate record button and send this on to Kieran Dewsbury Hall. You're supposed to cross the ball. Beat the first defender of the opposition, and you're supposed to try your best to put it in in or, in and around the penalty area, the penalty spot, away from their goal match, and then you hope that a Leicester player gets the head on it and scores. It's not difficult, Jewsbury Hall. You fail to do it all season, but I I, don't, I can't even remember the. You think you you'd think the guy's name would be ingrained in my brain for the amount of times he cleared it. It was what was it Fletcher or Fleming or something like that. I think we had seven Fleming, corners yeah. and he got on the end of six of us. He was our most dangerous bloke from corners because he got on every yeah. single one of his crosses. I mean, Gordon Bennett. Yeah, uh, Craig. Sorry, mate. I I'm not on. I'd have to be on. And well, I've got. All my three devices are working, so I can't get to my emails at the moment. Sorry, mate. Uh, Terry, uh, has Kate been down there? Um, <laughs> down, I don't know. Let's ask Dave. Dave, Kate, has Kate been down there? Um, no, she's not gone today. Not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. I, don't I'm on um, mute. I was on mute anyway. I... But look, um, yeah, I mean, the corners were absolutely dreadful. Do we need a set piece coach? Like Brendan had, not the same guy necessarily, but do we need somebody like that, Dave? It's fucking basic. No, I'm going to talk That's now. You said Dave's name. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry, 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 boys. I've got over. Yeah, I'm just numbing, I'm just numbing <laughs> down. Right? I'll be oh, sorry, Chris. I'm this. sorry. I'm not, but I am. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Are you fucking sorry? Are you not? Um, <laughs> it's, it's it's basic. You get the ball past the first defender from a corner. Simple, isn't it? Simple. Yeah, you think so? You yeah. think so, wouldn't you? You don't need a coach to teach you that. Bloody hell! I, I, I I'm know. just really. I mean, seventy-two percent possession, Brad. Seventy-two percent wow. possession. What the hell did we do with it? We went back and forth. We went back and forth. We went left and right. We went left and right. And then we allowed Millwall to get 11 players behind the ball and do nothing with it. That's exactly... Literally, the score tells you the story. What did we do with 72% possession? Nothing. We couldn't put it in the Millwall net to save our lives. It's just... Dave. You know what? At this point, I'd rather, I'd rather get Roy Hodgson in as a, as a corner taker coach because he'd probably put best of guard on corners but he'd probably do better than Jews Briol at taking the pissing things <laughs> I mean 11 shots Dave to their 6 3 on target oh, I find the 11 shots hard to believe to be honest um, I can remember the 3 on target but one was a cross from it <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> but it I, I don't know, mate. I'm speechless. I mean, you think by now we'd know what we were doing. And it was great. It's the sort of thing that, unfortunately, it's great when it's working because it's it did look impressive. Let's not get it wrong. Still, people, we were moaning about how boring it was at times, but it worked. So we put up with it. It's not been working now for six or seven games um, mm. or more. So we don't change it because, no, we're going to play the same way because Enzo's stubborn. Well, Enzo, mate, it could cost you the league. This light makes my hair look weird. Did it? we? Did we 
Dave, I'll stick with you for this one. Did Thanks. we get off lightly with 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 um, Sunderland doing us a favour? Bloody right, we did. We didn't deserve it either, mate. I and mean, we don't deserve to be top still. I mean, we probably won't be tomorrow night. But, um, you know, we we need to sort it out. We got what five games? Is it something like that? Five or six, maybe. I don't know. Five, um, five yeah. And if unless we change the what change, I mean, it's late in the day. But unless we change what we're doing. We're fucked. You know, we're going to be in the playoffs, and that's the worst thing that could possibly happen to a club that's been top most of the year. And I never Indeed. thought I'd say that. No, no, it's, it's, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Um, I mean, Brad, I, I, don't, I don't want to say this, but, you know, because, you know, we, we'd have taken this at the start of the season, wouldn't we? But, is Enzo the man for the job? I still think he is, and I really do, because there has been, throughout this season, different parts to our game that we've tried and worked. I think the biggest, the, the hardest thing is, and it's a, it's a, it's a mentality across the, the world of football, not just at, at, at Leicester, we looked, if you look at our last, I don't know, six results, uh, okay, you, take probably, you probably have to not include the QPR at home game. Um, or whichever our last defeat at home was. When we're at home, we seem to have that extra energy about us. It's like a comfort. We know the crowd are there to support us, cheer us on and go. We are too conservative away from home. We, we, we think we're slow on the ball maybe at home and sometimes it gets a bit eggy in the crowd when, it, when we're still nil-nil and haven't got the lead or something like that. But but the thing is, we play a lot higher tempo. We get in behind a lot. And in them, and, in, and I know it was injury time, Chris, but in them seven minutes of injury time, we actually got in behind. We got in behind them. We had the quicker pace on. It's it's annoying because I had nothing wrong with the lineup, but it's sod's law that the way the game's played out, that maybe the sub should have been the other way around. You know what I mean? We should have maybe have had Dakar on at the start. Maybe it should have been an unchanged 11. You know, maybe, maybe we should have had Fatter with ripping them up down the right hand side because, it, it, yeah, again, stop it on, but he did get in behind a couple of times. He did create our best two chances of the entire 97 and a half minutes or whatever it was, Chris. And that's that's the worrying thing that we talk about the quality and depth we've got in our squad, but just sometimes, and I go back way back to the Sheffield Wednesday draw at, at, at Hillsborough, Chris, you know, we just seem to not be able to have that fluidity when we sacrifice our starting 11. And that's basic, Chris. Me, you, Craig, Gobby over here. Um, he wants to talk over everybody. You know, even Kate, everybody. That's not fair. Involved. I don't want to do that. I see what I mean. See what I mean? Everybody on here could pretty much get Enzo starting 11 on. You swap out, you know, Vac Vardy and Dakar is, is he, he kind of like that with them, right? But Fatawu is on that wing and everybody else stays the same. And it's just frustrating. If you think about performances where we've lacked a bit of bite, apart from probably Bristol, it's been our strongest 11 more times than not. Because I just don't know what it is about we go to we go away from home against these teams that are a bit either fighting for their lives or in, in that middle park of, of no man's land. And we just don't know how to play against them. Give us a team in the top half chasing down playoffs and trying to knock us off our perch and we're up for the fight. We go for it. Give us a semi kind of rival game, I guess, against the Birmingham side and we're up for it. I just, I still think Enzo's the man to take us forward because if this is what he can do with this little experience, bearing in mind, Chris, I, I don't want to harp on about pass. I don't want to sound like a, a dirty tree hugger fan here. but. The points we have now in any other championship season, we would be promoted and coasting towards it. It's the fact that we've got two very, very good sides that have kept consistent with us. And even today, that well, Daniel Falk's been out for, out tactics, as, you, as you'd love to say. You know, he's been out of tactic by what a caretaker manager at Sunderland. I don't know if they've appointed a new manager, but if they have, then him. But you know what I mean? You know, it's just. Oh, yeah. it's, yeah. I still would back him to the hills. I mean, literally, Dave, it's, what, Tuesday today. In three days, we've got another game. Now, should we actually, you know, people say, oh, you know, there's only three games, you know, days between games, what have you. 
it's tournament football, really. It's what you know what the the internationals do. Should we not be moaning about that? Or you know, Plymouth look, Plymouth are going to be fighting for their lives. They are, um, as it stands, two points clear of Sheffield Wednesday. Three uh, three points clear of Birmingham. They will probably still won't get drawn in because of the goal difference. But again, they're going to be fighting for it, aren't they? Yeah, we, we've got to break these teams down and beat them. Millwall, we should have gone three or four tonight if we'd have been playing any good, but we weren't. And we didn't want to know. We, there was, I didn't see anything different when we were one down than what we played when we two up or one no, up. No, I agree with you and on that's that. The pro, that is the problem. We don't Do you think actually... it's the fact that Millwall didn't let us play? Because Mill, well, Millwall, come on. They, they, yeah. they, it was a good performance for Millwall. Yeah, it was. But, you know, we should still be good enough. If we want to win the championship, we should break them down. You know, it shouldn't be an issue. I don't think. Yeah, I think I've, I, I agree with Dave. Sorry, just chat just quickly. I agree with him because if you get at a team like Millwall, they don't play the rest of the game like that because they can't. If we, and, and look, hindsight's a wonderful thing. And, and this shows you how how small margins need to be finished because there's two chances. There's, 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 there's two scenarios where Leicester could have got something from the game and, and maybe even won the game. The Mavadidi heavy touch in the first half, he puts that away. It's a different game. Uh, it, it just is because they're chasing it and we're, and we're confident. The second one, you could argue from Mill's perspective, was that Oberfemi chance. He should have buried it and killed the game off. And how fuming would they have been had had Ian Acho headed in the, the, the equaliser and not had it cleared off the line? I can't believe he got cleared off the line by Bill by Billy Mitchell. Bloody hell, the only thing Bill, Bill Mitchell's ever done since his East Ender days is still in there. <laughs> it's not, it's not you know what I mean? Bro. It just shows we have to make sure we capitalise on these far margins. Because we got away with fine margins, didn't we, Chris, early in the season with, yeah. with teams having chances they missed. But we shouldn't have to leave it that late, should we? And we I don't think we show enough urgency early on. Because in, it's all right in the 93rd minute to show urgency and, and get the yeah. ball up front. But let's do it in the fifth minute. You know, really, there is no difference. If we do it in the fifth minute and, and play like FA Cup football, which it is now, as you've rightly said, it's all tournament stuff now. Then when we used to play teams above us in, in the FA Cup, we'd, chat, we'd harass them, we'd fight them, we'd put them down, we'd battle them now we think we can we just think i don't know I, I hate to say it but we almost think we're too good to do that sort of thing too good to sweat you know we just pass it around and do this and it comes to us i mean it's uh, yeah i know i hate saying it but that's what i think no no no, no. It, it, it it's true it's true that i said against um oh god my mind's going it was norwich we played last wasn't it yeah 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 I said against Norwich, which team would turn up? You know, yeah. no Birmingham. I said against Birmingham. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would yeah. would it be the Bristol that turned up or the Norwich that turned up? And it was the Norwich. Here, it was the Bristol. We can't seem to put. It, I mean, thank God, thank God, Matt, uh, Matt, thank God, Brad. We got that run when we did because if we hadn't had that good run, we'd be only be mid table now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we would be, or we, well, we'd probably be in and around that playoff hunt because you probably take about twenty points off us, so that would keep you. We'd be in the the position where we probably expected. We have to we have to remember, apart from the ever diehard optimist or perfectionist demanders demanding fans out there, the goal was playoffs. Now, I'm not saying if we get third, I'm still going to be sad yeah, to it have now the season's yeah, gone. Yeah. But you have to you have to rein in your expectation and realise where you were happy with it being four months ago, because five six months ago, because you'd have gone, this is great, this is great, we're guaranteed, we're going to get playoffs definitely at this rate. There's there's definitely going to be a promotion fight on at some point. And again, whether we look. It's not ideal to have to rely on a Sunderland ball draw against Leeds, but it does what it does, Chris. And that means that regardless of its which is result tomorrow, easy for me to say, it's the to switch, we're still going to be in them automatic zones come Friday. 
And they need to, Chris, what they need to do is they need to do what they did in the last seven minutes tonight in the first 10 minutes against Plymouth. And on top of that, Chris, they need to be scoring first. I am sick to death, in, in a way, as much as I like it, like his winning games, Chris, I am sick to death in the last few weeks of saying we came from behind to win it. Yeah. Norwich. Yeah. I, you know, we had to come from behind against, well, we had to come from being drawn back level from Birmingham, you know, tonight we were going to have to come from behind again. And this time we failed to do that. I do not want to be sat here at half time against Plymouth going, we need something to get us back in this game and come from behind to win it. I want to be sat for once this stinking week. Can I be sat here with you, Chris and Dave, or whoever else is joining us on that Friday night, sat here going, oh, there we go. That's the first half we've been looking for. I want that. I don't want to be sat here cheering a second half performance as much as I'd like it as long as we win the game. That happens, Chris, eventually. The result right above me happens eventually when it doesn't. Yeah, just... yeah you, 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 you're quite right. I mean, Dave... Chris. Where where do we go from here? <laughs> well, to Plymouth, obviously. Plymouth, the obvious yeah. You know what, mate? I don't know because I don't think it'll change and I think we'll do the same old shit at Plymouth. And it's been frustrating for a while now. Even though we got victories, I mean, Brad said it enough times over the weeks and weeks that, you know, we're one-dimensional. We, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, we don't know what else to do. You know, you've got teams that come and go and play well and lose or play badly and win. We, we, we seem to struggle to play anything different. And I don't know what the answer is. I really don't, because he's not going to change. Um, Millwall were there for the taking. If we'd have got that early, yeah, you're right, that early goal would have killed them because their heads would have gone down. But we don't get the early goal. And I'm repeating you Daniel guys. Bristol. But... Yeah, Daniel Bristol. it is. Yeah. Didn't kill them off, didn't get the goal. Look what happened. But I mean, you, you look at people who are fighting. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, were they 2 0 down today uh -huh. and drew 2 all, which uh -huh. actually is one of the few results I got right, if I may say, in the fantasy. You actually got. Got three two to, I had a Desmond on that one. Um, I did. But, you know... Don't pass us over more, Dave. Me and Chris only <laughs> got a point. <laughs> um, and that was a Preston whip, believe it or I, not. I think I might have got one more right as well. I'm not sure. Yeah, you got the Preston result, but the way I wrote it down, you would have got three points on it, but you went for the score, but the game above was 4-1, and you went 3-1 for the Preston. Oh, uh, bugger. Oh, well, anyway. But, you know, the results that should have happened didn't. I mean... Coventry, you'd have fancied their chances at Southampton, really. Mm. Um, Preston, who knows what they'd have done against Huddersfield. Mm. And uh, QPR drew at Plymouth. Well, I definitely didn't have that one. So no. what I'm saying is teams are doing this. But the fact is we should be good enough. But then you look at Leeds and Leeds fans will be saying the same. They should have won tonight and they should have been top. And they'll be pissed off that they're not top. They will be, won't they? I mean, well, they didn't. They didn't lose, Chris. I took the draw tonight before the game. I must say, because knowing what we're like when it gets like this, a point's a point, and we could have done that extra point would have helped. But you know, we're not dead yet. That's the secret. But unless he puts it right for Saturday, we will be. But but we need CPR, don't we? We need something. We yeah, need. Yeah, I see what you did. I see, I see, I see, I see what you did. You know, we do, and we need it. And it's probably actually, in a weird way, the best way we could do it is by being away uh, to Plymouth because, the, you know, we've got a couple of away games come the end of the season, which are going to be tricky for us to, to, to manufacture. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to be sat here, Chris, like Leeds fans and Ipswich fans will when we play Southampton, begging the opposition to score a goal. That made me laugh early when I read it. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't want to be sat here, like we have been tonight, Chris, begging Sunderland to hold on or, or yeah. make a winner. I don't want to be a Leeds fan ever, personally, but I don't want to be a Leeds or an Ipswich fan sat there, glued to the TV, whenever it is we play Southampton, going, please Southampton, please beat them, because... The one there's two pos there's two things we have to we have to kind of use and maybe maybe print this out on the wall for training tomorrow and remind these players just what the fuck they're battling for. We've got away with it tonight. Now we are 
but te- let's just say Ipswich win their game and go ahead of us, right? We are second by a point, right? Even if we win, if we do our job and put in a performance and win on Friday, we will go into that game against Southampton, Chris, knowing we can actually extend that lead. And that still baffles me more than losing to Millwall, that we can still have this game in hand and not only, not, not, not to get us back in the top two, but potentially, as long as we do our job against Plymouth, it will extend our lead over third place, maybe even first. You know, can't believe I'm going to be watching Ipswich Watford with some intent tomorrow. That's annoying. I'd rather, I was hoping, Chris, to not bother about really checking it tomorrow. I, I'm supposed to be down the pub. I don't know because I've left my phone in the other room so it doesn't keep buzz while I'm watching the game. Yeah, you um, get them as well. I'm getting loads of messages from yeah, but the thing is, I have when you've got alerts on your phone, isn't it? It goes off probably before I actually see it. And uh, right. um, but I'm going down the pub tomorrow, so hopefully I can get pissed and not worry about it. Um, look, I, I've we still have a game in hand, hand, won't we? And we'll only be two points behind, exactly. So it's exactly. still in our hands, it, but... Ipswich will be happy, Leeds will be pissed off. Um, yeah. I want to say, Dave. Give me your performance rating in your man of the match. Oh, Jesus. Um, four. Um, okay. Man of the match, bloody hell. You know, no. in the last couple of games, we've said it's really hard because everybody's coming up with different man of, the ma- man of the match because, you know, they've all played so well, it's difficult to pick one. Mm. Opposite today, difficult to pick one because they're all so shit. I really don't know. I think... Doyle was okay, but yeah. he does what he's told, doesn't he? I think he was look, at least looking to play forward. Um, mm. I really can't think of anybody else that I could pick. Well, you can't. Um, you can't say no. Nobody deserved it. Well, no, nobody. Well, nobody deserved a man of the match. No, man of the match is for something special, and we didn't have anything special there tonight, unless right. you count the sub. Well, no, you, oh, you can't. You can pick whatever you want that was has been on the pitch for any length of time. Oh, I mean, first of all, I'm going to just agree with Dave on the rating four. Um, but I agree, with Dave. Man of the match goes to for a special performance, and for me, I know he didn't score for them today. I would personally, if I was a neutral, I'd have given it to Oberfemi because he actually had our back back line yeah. on toast. Three out of the four back line he had on toast. If I was to pick a shining light, one player that never seemed to shirk a tackle, his responsibility, his urgency to try and do something and get forward. The only light, and a few of you have got him spot on in the comments, in my opinion, Ricky P. Ricardo Pereira was the only one that seemed to have his bit between the teeth that was willing to go at them. And to the point where he was trying to get Leicester extra time by arguing with the ref. He was shouting at players. He was pushing them forward. He was demanding the ball, bypass him almost to get get us out on the wings. We'd go forward quicker. You know, I know Jamie Vardy is a a, a raw you up captain. But can we just give the captain's armband to Ricky P? Mm. Because what I will say this, right, and this may sound bizarre, And I might get blasted for it. And I'll take anything that comes my way. For those that are bemoaning Ian Apto's mischance and Dak's mischance, Vardy was our worst strike on the pitch tonight and offered us nothing with his voice. I didn't see him command anything. No. I didn't see him take any chances. I didn't see him running back. I didn't see him do anything. So why is he captain? Give it Ricky P because at least he showed he had the best grit and effort out there. And and in what was, well, we're giving it fourth. So... Shows you how much we thought of the entire performance. Can I say Indeed. I totally agree with Bradley? How dare you call me Bradley? No, no, Chris, <laughs> don't worry. I've got this. I've got this. Get out. Get out, Dave. <laughs> You're in the naughty corner. Think about what you've just called me. They gave you a compliment, did they? And then they called me Bradley. He started slapping me across the face and saying, sorry, isn't it? It's an, endear- it's an endearing Now, I, I've got to say, and I find this really strange. I know Dave went for nobody, but he's gone for a four. Um, Brad, you went for Ricky P. I well, had a four. Ricky P. Maybe as well, if I had to. If well, I I, had to. I went I went four, and I also went Ricky P. 
Yeah, yeah, well, we're know, that's, that's why we do of, this. Of that point, and a very good point you made, Brad, about the captain's armband. Yeah. You know, what what use as a captain was Vardy tonight? Just, Where was he going round getting people? Come on, let's get, you know, he had nothing. In fact, I tell you what, I forgot he was on the pitch most of the time. I'm I sorry, I'm sorry. Dacker was shit, by the way. No, it but, was, it was uh, stop Dacker it, stop told it. the Vardy was shit. I get it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and I've got to say, uh, Craig, I've just seen your image. I'm not going to put it up because it will cause a storm. Um, on, Craig, put it up, put it up. <laughs> but um, this is what now. This is the guy that was at the game, um, uh, Alan. He sent me his uh, his choice. Um, he's got what he said, worst performance of the season, gutted. Um, and I got and I've said poor performance. Performance, he's gone just a bit, Chris. But this is the guy who was at the den tonight. Safe journey home, Alan. You probably need a, a, an escort. Uh, and I don't mean the, you know, the ones. I mean the police ones. Uh, they don't make them anymore, do they? But this is what Alan's gone for. Mm. I mean, in a way, I can't, I can't blame him for no, his pick no. because seven minutes of shining quality, two balls, well, that's, yeah. two that's chances. Yeah, yeah. I he, said, yeah no, he said, what he actually said was, can't pick yeah. one, but for the short time he was on Fatawu. And yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. fair point. I, I, I can, uh, I've never known him go that low with a team performance. And he, right. he said, worst performance of the season. It was the most boring interesting, performance of the season. Interesting. It really was boring to watch until that seven minutes of injury time, Chris. You know what? I perform asleep. Sorry. For God's sake, get your name. Listen, 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 Dave. Clear them ears out. But yeah. Seven no, no, minutes. no, no. Don't don't respect your elders, Brad. Respect your elders. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Josh Dave. Elders. Yeah, he's his hearing aid. If I shout loud enough, he'll hear me. There you go. <laughs> you know that, you know that faulty tower step sketch. Have you yeah. got a hearing aid? Yes. Do you want me to get you some batteries? <laughs> well, I haven't turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Chris, um, I can't. Dave, you were say. What? <laughs> well, I was. You was. I was. I. No idea, mate. No, he's he's senile, senile, he's gone. We've lost gone. Dave. The and 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 yeah, so guys, we... well, like the three of us, Dave is the one I'm probably on a promise. No. So, <laughs> I've got to say, yeah, Le Leicester lost, but at least well, somebody will score tonight. And Bellic. Dave's more likely to score than Dakar. No, no I'm um, drinking myself to sleep tonight, mate. I've got to say, tomorrow night, don't forget, guys, uh, we're playing on Friday, so you need to get your, your predictions in uh, predictions. Uh, earlier, uh, a day earlier, please. And the prediction show is tomorrow while I'm getting pissed down the, the pub. The championship is to, uh, prediction show is tomorrow. Oh, I'm on tomorrow, I? Oh, for God's sake, it's seen all, isn't it? Yes, Dave, you're it's, on tomorrow. God, can I just Chris, say, it's been a getting very, this when you make sure he's turned up. It's been a very long day. That's all I can say. Did you, I did send you a message and you did reply with a thumbs up. I did. Up. Thank yes, you. It did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you very much. Sleep tight, wants, boys. And you and Brad, I'll have a quick one with you after. Hey. <laughs> Extremes just said. <laughs> uh, meeting Kate, are we, Dave? Um, what time is it? No, it's not tonight. It's a bit late. <laughs> Although I know, I think Craig is actually saying this to you, uh, Dave. Put it up, put it up. I'm sure that's what he's referring to. <laughs> 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 Guys, thank uh, you so very much. Look, not a good evening, no. uh, but there we go, Dave. Um, just Take give care, everybody a, a big shout out as to where they can find you. What day is it today? Tuesday, Tuesday. Well, Thursday, surreyhillsradio.co.uk, five till seven. You'll see how fierce my wife is with me. Wow. He loves it. Wow, I didn't know that was such a show you were putting on, Dave. Ooh, <laughs> anyway, how much is that? Like, sex, sex, sex protection. <laughs> it's only the radio. How is that only, is that only fans? <laughs> The right, things he does, right, the right. things he does to get listeners, I'll tell you. Hello, right? He's doing and he has a go at me all. for doing the vagina museums. <laughs> that was a that. bit of a problem, yeah. <laughs> Pot, kettle of black, young Mr. Smith. Indeed. 
<laughs> yeah. Take care, oh, buddy. After a performance like that, we're ending the night talking about a bunch of fannies. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> talking about a bunch of fannies. Where can people find you, Brad? <laughs> Don't call my audience that or me. You, you can find this handsome face all the way over on LTID TV too. We've got WSL content coming uh, in the near future. There is a huge FA Cup semi final against Tottenham Hotspur to bring you on the 14th. I yeah. believe that will be live some format, so I should be able to do a watch long for it. And there's also, once I can organise and stop having arguments with StreamYard, our uh, Dave, Dave, that's you, Dave, right, is, is coming on the Leicester City Pyramid football quiz. So, yeah, check us out yeah. there, love football quizzes and WSL content. And uh, obviously make sure... Before you go over to my channel, make sure you've hit the like button and subscribe button on this lovely channel here. Gentlemen, it's been, a, well, it hasn't been a pleasure because obviously we've lost, but thank you both no. very, very much for doing. You can still smile. You, indeed, if you didn't smile, you'd cry, as they say. You would indeed. Remember, yeah. when you're smiling, the whole world smiles Cries with you. with you. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. <laughs> Thanks very they're much, not, guys. And don't forget, boys. you can catch these two, Dick and Dom, uh, in the, <laughs> he's in definitely, he, he's definitely dick. <laughs> I spoke to Kate. Apparently, he's he's dead. Oh, so. I am. Wow. Well, I rest my case. You we did very very well. I gotta just say, we we did, we for almost three hours fifteen minutes, we kept it clean. <laughs> yeah, a bit like Leicester for about ninety odd minutes, we didn't do much, and then we expected the injury time. We just, time, we just out exploded. Yeah, yeah. Really. Gentlemen, on, thank you very much. Good luck with the show tomorrow. Speak to you Take soon. Care. See I'll speak to you afterwards, Brad. Cheers, guys. So, thank you very much to Bradley and to uh, I called him that because I've taken him off screen. Uh, to Brad and to um, uh, uh, what's he, what was his name? Oh, Dave. Yes, that's very much. He, he shot off quickly. I think he is on a promise. So, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, I'll be down the pub. But um, Brad and Dave will be here doing your predictions. And then we're back on Thursday with a Plymouth fan who's probably looking out if he watches that game, we'll probably be looking forward to the game. We're away at Plymouth uh on um uh on this week. Brad, if he if you if you thought anything of this channel, would have gone down to stay with his mom so that he could have gone and given us a live report from the game. But oh no, oh no, 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 he wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do that, would you, Brad? No, I wouldn't do a silly. <laughs> I told you you wouldn't uh, But thanks very much to everybody that's been watching Thanks very much if you've been listening by the YouTube podcast Don't know how that works but apparently it does exist And we will uh, see you Like I say tomorrow at 7 for the prediction Thursday at 7 for the um, Preview and 7 o'clock on Friday for the match Good night. thanks very much Thanks for watching These videos are tremendous You better like them too or I'll be back The TalkSport Fan Network is the ultimate on-demand destination for the UK's best fan-led football podcasts. Including Leicester Till I Die, independent analysis and reaction for the Foxes Faithful. The TalkSport Fan Network. Unbeatable club-dedicated content created by the fans, for the fans. Follow the podcast on the